माइक बंद है सर माइक टेक्निकल इश्यू है लाइव स्ट्रीमिंग सर गुड मॉर्निंग गुड मॉर्निंग सर गुड मॉर्निंग टेक्निकल इश्यू है थोड़ा हाँ 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 लाइव स्ट्रीमिंग ची लिंक फिर एक्टिवेट की पार्टीसिपेंट सडमिट करता है ओके 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 ठीक है सर काय हरकत टेक्निकल टीम सर एडमिट ऑल ऑप्शन ऑन ऑटोमेटिक सी एड होती हो हो सर बोला की हाँ एडमिट ऑल ऑप्शन चालू करा तो राजपुर सर पीपीटी रीच होती का थोड़ा चेक करा हेलो हाँ सर राजपुर सर तुम पेल है नहीं कि एड्रेस है स्क्रीन रीच होते क्या बार स्क्रीन है नीपीटी रन करा फिर उजवा माउस उजवा बटन क्लिक करा तथे खाली एक पेन ब हाँ एक पेन घया ओके मे दसेल हाईलाइट हाईलाइट रास्ट हाईलाइटर मध्य कुछ तरी ब पेन चे दिता है मोटा है बंद नहीं करते ठीक है बंद के बंद के लिंक है ना ऑनलाइन लिंक यूट्यूब का यूट्यूब लाइव स्ट्रीमिंग ना तो कहीं गड़बड़ी जूम ची आई डी पासवर्ड बार फिर मोस्ट ऑफ दी क्वांटम ऑफ दी पार्टीसिपंट्स दे आर फ्रॉम यूट्यूब मग अड़चन बार सर बोबड़े सर है कभी हेलो 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 बोबड़े सर है कभी
हॅलो सर मी तुम्हाला एक नंबर देऊ का तुम्हाला युट्यूब बद्दल अडचण सॉल्व्ह करण्यासाठी हॅलो हा सर झालाय प्रॉब्लेम सॉल्व्ह झालाय लाईव्ह स्ट्रीमिंगचा ओके राजपुरे सर राजपुरे सर राजपुरे सर म्यूट दिसत आहेत बघा सर योगेश हा सर लाईव्ह स्ट्रीमिंगची लिंक शेअर केली सर मी तुम्हाला ओके ओके चाली सुरू झाली हो हो इथूनच बोला नाही तसं दोन मिनिट या इकडे अनम्यूट करा सर तुम्हाला योगेश हा बोला सर आता काय अडचण आहे का आता काही प्रॉब्लेम नाही एक दोन मिनिटात आपण स्टार्ट करू हा ठीक आहे आणि बोबडे सर दिसत नाहीत ऑनलाईन हे काय बोबडे सर आहेत की दिसत आहेत का हा हा हॅलो हा सर हा सर गुड मॉर्निंग गुड मॉर्निंग सगळं आता सुरू करा तुम्ही सर जरा टेक्निकल प्रॉब्लेम आला होता हा सर आवाज येतोय राजपुरी सर सुरू करा तुम्ही हॅलो ढोले सर हा येस सर मला असं वाटतं की सुरू करा आवाज येतोय ना सर हा हो हो सुरू करा आवाज येतोय सगळ्यांना म्यूट करा आणि यू कॅन स्टार्ट ओके ओके सर स्टार्ट करूया मग आपण आता हॅलो स्टार्ट करा योगेश स्टार्ट करा ओके ओके सर करतोय स्टार्ट लगेच अ व्हेरी गुड मॉर्निंग टू वन अँड ऑल सॉरी फॉर दिस टेक्निकल डिस्टर्बन्स आय वुड लाईक टू एक्सप्रेस माय heartfelt gratitude to all of you for sincerely committed to this event to make it a success the schedule of this online seminar includes red git followed by introduction of seminar introduction of chief guest and resource persons keynote address presidential address then invited talk of our three esteemed resource persons no all the participants are requested that please make your mute during the seminar 
and if you have any question then you can write it on in a chat box or you can raise your hand i ensure that this seminar will be profitable and fruitful for everyone thank you one and all now let's start with the red git audio problem patak sir hello hello mala sathe ki don kadve mana na tumhi patak sir योगेश रयत गीत मना मना सा वाटत की बाय कोणाला येत असेल तर सर तुम्ही अनिकेत जाधवना को होस्ट करा आणि त्यांच्याकडे कंट्रोल द्या ते करतील चांगल्या पद्धतीने कंट्रोल
काहीतरी त्यांच्याच कनेक्टिव्हिटीचा प्रॉब्लेम असतोय किल्लेदार सर बोबडे सर हा बोला की सर जरा अनिकेत जाधवची मदत घ्या हे सगळं व्यवस्थित हॅन्डल करत ओके को होस्ट करा त्यांना हॅलो हा सर ऑनलाईन सुरू आहे लेक्चर हा बोला की हो 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 बर 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 नाही ते आता ऑनलाईन सुरू आहे लॉग इन केलेलं आहे हो 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 शिंदे मॅडम ठीक ठीक करा तुम्हाला आणि स्टार्ट करा ओके सर थँक यू A very good morning to all of you. Okay. Hello. A very good morning to all of you. I welcome you all on behalf of Department of Physics, Balwan College, Vita. It gives me an immense pleasure to announce that I am a part of this national online seminar. Uh, the purpose of organizing this online seminar is to develop deeper perspectives among the researchers in the field of materials research today we have eminent resource persons they will share their views on novel okay. synthesis techniques of advanced materials they also will share their expertise in wide area of applications of materials i hope all of you will enjoy the whole day with these eminent personalities thank you very much to join with us now i request head of our department dr c r bobde sir to introduce today's guests over to bobde sir stop sharing hello i am dr chandrakant bobde hmm? associate professor yeah, at the department of physics i extend my warm welcome all the participants from the mm-hmm. states of india mm-hmm. participating in national online seminar trend in the stop service. sharing all in i take this opportunity mm-hmm. to introduce president okay. and mm-hmm. resource persons of this new trends the president of this online seminar is none other than people of the country source of motivation and encouragement to all faculty students of the college vita sir has completed his bsc msc and phd in college to ajin or college he has more than 15 years of working experience as a principal of various colleges of higher education of the sankara he has teaching experience of about 30 and research experience of about 4 years to his credit he has published 56 research paper in journal national report so far so far phd under his guidance बोबडे सर आवाज फार ब्रेक होतोय 
Professor Rajpuri is currently as a professor in the Bangalore University of Kolkata. He has completed his B.Sc. and M.Sc. in Science. Completed his MSc in 1994 and secured first rank at the end and was awarded the Dumbaker Award for having stood the first dollar of merit. He has worked at Junior Research Center and Junior Research Center and was awarded in 2000. He has qualified state eligibility test. Sciences in the year 2002. His interested research topics include thin films, solar cell, transparent conducting types, gas, photoelectrocatalysis, water verification, etc. He was honored for his contribution in research work by awarding life membership of Maharashtra Academy of Sciences. Pune in the year 2015. Till now, he has published 211 research articles in reputed international journals and acquired 7,310 citations. His H index is 51 and I index is 157. He has successfully guided 14 PhD to M. And 59 MSc students. Currently, six MSc students and five PhD scholars are working under his guidance. He participated in more than 50 national and international conferences and has organized most of the conferences here in Shivaji, Department of Physics, Shivaji University. He has published five books and filed two patents. He successfully completed five thesis projects work to his statistics tax, which, which were funded by the He was instrumental in establishing various facilities in PIFC, Physics Instrumentation Facility Center. So, university has entrusted additional responsibility of the department, the head department of USIC, University Science Instrumentation Center of CSC. On him. Currently, he is working as coordinator of uh, Sophisticated Analytical Instrumentation Facility Center at Shivaji University. He is a member of Board of Studies of Karnataka University of Harvard, TC College Baramati, Vivekanam College, Palapu, DKT, Itra Karanji, JSPM, Rajesh, Rajesh C. Shahu College of Engineering, Pune, Pune, and KBP College, Pandapur. PhD referee for various universities. He is a life member of Marathi Vijnan Parishad, Materials Research Society of India, Marathi Semiconductor Society of India, etc. He is Also, he is working on editorial of various research journals. Sir will be delivering delivering talk. On metal oxide semiconductors. The resource person for second session will be Professor Sanjay Dhole. He is currently working as professor in Department of Physics, Savitri Bai Dhole, Pune University, Pune. He has completed MSc, MPhil, and PhD from Savitri Bai Dhole, Pune University, Pune, and. He completed his post doctorate from Nagoya, Japan. 
Professor Dhole has teaching experience of about 24 years and research experience of 28 years. His research areas are accelerator and radiation physics, experimental and computational physics, medical accelerator physics, etc. So far, sir has published 125 research papers in journals of international report and 59 abstracts have been published in various proceedings. To his credit, 13 students have completed MPhil degree from Pune University. 20 students have completed PhD degree of Pune University. And three students have completed postdoc degree in Savitri Pune University. Pune. Sir has also completed 20 research projects worth of his 2.6 funded by various funding agencies. Three projects are ongoing worth of his one He has added, attended 12 international seminars and has organized several seminars from the Department of Education. He has written about 14 books. Today, he will be delivering his talk on synthesis of metals and semiconductor nanoparticles by fusion metal. We will be extremely pleased to have among the professors in the and invited speaker for the second session. In the third session, we have Dr. Joha Chiri of Jammu Kashmir. So far, he has guided one research student who has completed PhD and violence. He has filed one patent. His research areas are synthesis of organic and inorganic for resistive switching and dynamic devices, optoelectronics, optoelectronics, LED, photoelectrochemical cells, etc. We will be having Dr. Joe Achire as the result of the presentation of the seminar and he will be delivering his talk on flexible resistive switching memory based on organic motion with the introduction of dignitaries I acknowledge the support given by authorities and department of physics this GM College Karat with whom our department has a memorandum, memorandum of understanding for quality education. Jai Hind. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Now it's part of the seminar. Uh, I would like to invite Dr. K. Y. Rajpure, sir, for keynote address. Thank you, madam. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Uh, president of today's seminar, of course, uh, he is uh, offline. Uh, my colleagues, Dr. Dhole, Professor Dhole, and uh, Dr. Jehova, coordinator of the conference, convener, secretary, uh, my teachers, I can see among uh, the audience, my teachers, my students, I can see, my colleagues, and a fellow researcher. Good morning to one and all. I am indeed happy to be a part of this uh, national seminar on recent trends in digital research. Balan College Vita. Rajpuri sir, unmute kara sir, Raj. Unmute kara. I 
at the outset i would like to thank my respected teacher and the dynamic leader principal dr cj khilare sir who is president of uh, uh, seminar and respected dr cr bobde sir uh, who is convener and head of the department of physics at balwan college vita for having offered me this opportunity to be amongst you all and share my experience in the materials research friends i am product of rail shikshan samstha therefore being a product of rail shikshan samstha i would like to offer my sincere gratitude towards the chairman mc members secretary and senior principals in rail shikshan samstha for entrusting me this responsibility to encourage the young researchers i am extremely grateful to them for having supposed me capable of doing this act for them uh today's invited speakers including myself my friend and colleague uh professor sanjay dhole from tavati bai phule pune university pune and dr jeva who is from central university jammu all three speakers would be addressing about the advanced materials then novel techniques for fabricating uh, new materials the way in which the properties of these materials can be tuned and the way in which these materials can be used in the advanced fields of science and technology uh, i am also delighted to see the overwhelming response uh, for this e seminar in a very short span of time uh, more than 400 registrations and now i can see more than 150 online attendances and uh, more than 100 online youtube attendance is the evidence for this of course the hard work by uh, dr bobde sir and his team has paid off and his team consists of uh, mr yogesh patak who is co convener mr dinesh dongde who is coordinator and mrs priyanka sinde who is organizing secretary of this seminar so i take this opportunity to congratulate bobde sir and his team for successful organizing this event friends i have great honor and privilege to give keynote address at this uh, very hall a nice gathering for this i would like to share uh, i would like to take help of powerpoint presentations yeah friends immediately after completing my msc in 1994 i started my research career in material science the theme of uh, our conference also is the recent trends in the materials research therefore to begin with i would like to tell you the fact that since last 24 years i am working in the materials field i am working both in bulk and thin film materials and i am using these materials in various applications uh, wherein initially i worked on porous ultralight silicon aerogel for advanced applications also i worked on chalcogenide materials in solar cell application i am working on transparent conducting oxide coatings by economical chemical techniques for energy harvesting conversion and storage devices in addition to this i am working on composite oxide magnetic materials for magnetoelectric applications this is the slide where i have graphically demonstrated the list of the materials on which i have worked and the number of publications which we have uh got the number of papers which we have published on the various materials as you can see the quantum of the work is centered around transparent conducting oxides solar cell materials photo electrocatalysis gas sensor me composite uv detector and i am working on the memristor application also so for my work was recognized recently by maharashtra academy of sciences and in 
2015 uh, they felicitated me by giving their membership materials as you all you know is a very broad and vital field of knowledge and it has made a foundation stone of modern technological society of course this is interdisciplinary field concerning understanding and utilization of the properties of matter and the interdisciplinary field consists of the subjects like physics chemistry biology electronics engineering chemical engineering civil engineering computational engineering and so on friends these materials the material can be a natural material can be a man made material the the materials can be natural material like wood or the human made materials like the material like so there are more than 3 lakh uh, different material known to the mankind of course of this 3 lakh fields here i am giving a representative list just to know what is happening in the metal science research so the materials are magnetic materials superconducting materials thermoelectric material supercapacitors energy devices electronic materials bio materials semiconducting materials graphene polymers composites nano materials opto electronic materials just a minute i i wish to ha huh, right a uh, new generation paramagnetic material i will begin my discussion with the new uh, generation paramagnet permanent magnets we know the permanent magnets they are made from the ferromagnetic materials and the traditional materials used for preparing ferromagnetic materials or the permanent magnets they are iron nickel and cobalt and alloys and the mineral minerals like lodestone but the new generation magnetic uh, materials of course they are way their magnetic strength is very high they are moderately corrosion resistance their operating temperature also is very high but we have to bit cope up with the cost of the materials and these materials this is the list of the material these are the new generation permanent magnets among these alnico smco and ndfeb these are used extensively in storage media robots and sensing sound superconductors is the another class of the materials since its invention in 1911 by ohms he observed the superconductivity in the mercury at uh, 4.2 K kelvin temperature very very low temperature and we know superconductivity means Uh, the charges or the current moves through the material without resistance the research in the material uh, superconductivity was uh, concentrated on investigating finding materials having relatively higher uh, critical temperature and in 1986 on around that the high tc superconductor like a ybco bisco hmm, they were investigated constant effort in finding or increasing uh, finding the materials having relatively higher tc is continuously uh, goes on and now the material like lanthanum decahedrate lah10 whose critical temperature is around minus 23 degree celsius that is around 250 kelvin we is investigated people are still working on inventing the room temperature tc based superconductors for the applications like levitating trains and cars and logistic system thermoelectric material they convert heat energy into electrical energy and vice versa and we know sibek has demonstrated that the we, if you if you create a temperature difference along a material the voltage can be generated 
the current interest or the current goal of people is to develop the link between or the uh, they are developing the state of art strategies for high performance thermaltic materials and devices and uh, they are doing this by uh, establishing the link between synthesis uh, the structural of the material characteristics of the material and their underlying science particularly physics and chemistry and these advanced thermaltic materials would improve refrigeration efficiency at the acs and freezers and this is the list of the thermaltic materials energy storage devices particularly batteries and the well known battery uh, batteries uh, known to us they are lithium ion battery lead acid batteries but the super capacitor seems to be a substitute for the batteries we can say it bridges the gap between capacitor and rechargeable batteries and these super capacitors are used in the applications where the rapid charge discharge cycle is needed then the long term uh, capacity of storage and the current uh, research in the energy storage devices is developing the super capacitors for rapid charging of the storage batteries for hybrid vehicles and this is done with the help of double layer capacitor and the capacity of the order of 10 kilofarad has been uh, observed in is realized in many materials the extensive uh, uh, studied material for the super capacitor is ruthenium oxide then people are working on metal oxides people are working on polymer materials and carbon materials for energy storage devices particularly super capacitors energy harvesting and storage devices photo electrocatalysis and photocatalysis is used for the purification methods and for water splitting and the prospect of semiconductor photo and semiconductor is used for the photocatalysis and my today's topic uh, which i i will be delivering uh, in the second session after uh, professor dhole is centered on use of semiconducting oxides for photocatalysis so people are extensively uh, investigating the materials new materials and they are tuning the properties for making use of these materials in degradation of water or purification of water efficient and economical photochemical water splitting methods will be certainly a breakthrough and that could be the underpin in hydrogen economy and the materials like titania tungsten trioxide zinc oxide barium titanate and their composites are tried for photo electrochemical and photocatalytic solar energy harvesting sofc solid oxide fuel cell this these are basically a fuel cell we know fuel cell it is a combustion free and pollution free combustion less and pollution free power source it converts chemical energy into electricity and this chemical energy of a fuel like hydrogen and the oxidizing agent like oxygen is converted into electricity in sofc solid oxide is used as the electrolyte we know for the fuel cell we need electrolyte cathode anode and interconnect and supporting materials among these the electrolyte material they are solid oxide and the popular electrolytes electrolyte materials like ysz scsz gdc they are tried in sofc and the efficiency Uh, of the order of 60% or even more than that has been realized in this sofc field the operating lifetime of these sofc is more than 40000 hours after electronic photonic materials like direct band gap 35 semiconductors gallium arsenide indium phosphide gallium nitride gallium antimonide or the photonic materials like gallium arsenide aluminum gallium arsenide and their alloys they are of a pivotal significance due to their frequent use in the uh, well known gadgets like pcs hard drives cell phones etc etc and the apto electronic devices like laser diodes super luminescent diodes and light emitting diodes photo detectors imaging detectors they are heart of this apto electronic technology the gadgets 
and device is based on as i said semiconducting oxide material composite direct band gap semiconductors magnetic materials based on these spintronic materials this spintronic material uh, it is the layered material where we have the layers of metal insulator and another metal and these spintronic material like uh, abo3 type of materials they are used like BiFeO3, YMnO3, LuFeO4, RMnO3. We know nanotechnology can be a separate topic of seminar or it can be a separate a lecture. But certainly this nanotechnology has changed the overall approach of material science. And these materials, they can be quantum dots, that is zero dimensional materials, wires like one dimensional material thin film two dimensional nanostructure and the three dimensional nanostructure can also be fabricated so material in zero one two three dimension uh, can be fabricated we know if you make a material having size particle size less than 100 nanometer then the property of these material they drastically change and all the advantages of these materials when the size is reduced is used in a diverse field of these um, in the science and technology particularly the field in which these um, materials where their properties can be tuned is used they are optical devices magnetic gadget catalysis microelectronics pharmaceutics storage technologies and energy conversion devices so far as the materials like ceramic and glasses are concerned, some applications of the material science to drastically improving the properties of the common components is the Corning Grozilla, uh, Gorilla glass, which is a scratch resistance. We know the potassium, it diffuses far inside the surface of the material and but, uh, it, this increases the toughness and comprehensive strength of the material. And the surface of the material becomes highly resistant and damage free. Another materials and the composites where which are used in the uh, space shuttle protection system, they are thermally insulating composite materials and they play a very key role in the projection system, protection system. Polymer technology or the polymer material is the another class of the material which has carved a place in the fields of automobile industry, electronic industry, aerospace industry textile industries and the materials like pani ppy pt psc uh, polyfuran and polyzolid they are extensively used <laughs> is carbon nanotube based fibers and these are extremely high specific strength materials and they have high modular their multifunctionality is used in the paper industry and textile industry the carbon nanotubes, they can be single wall or they can be multi walled carbon nanotubes. And so far as the use of the CNT is in medic medicine, medical field is concerned, we can, they have used the, these CNTs in bioimaging, drug delivery, biosensor, tissue regeneration, cancer treatment, and 3D scan. Code. A new field. called as computational material science research, where the computational mm, methods like DFT, density functional theory, molecular dynamics, kinetic Monte Carlo, dislocation dynamics, phase field, crystal plasticity, finite element methods, all these are used through a computer program and a material they are literally computed and designed on the computer and the, as per the desired property so materials they are fabricated or designed on the computer and they are tested they simulated on the computer for with various properties so in this way we reduce the cumbersome time because just we try trial and basis uh, we use trial and basis for finding the optimum properties of the material so the tailoring and the tuning of the properties can be done with the help of uh, the computational material science research.
graphene as you know is a allotrope of the carbon it is the strongest material and this material they can efficiently conduct the heat and electricity and very well known examples of the graphene they are in the sensors aerospace high speed transistor tissues energy application electrical electronics and certainly the discovery of the nanotechnology graphene has immensely boosted in nanotechnology research current research in the graphene are mainly focused on modification of this graphene to enhance the application in the potential different areas of nano science and nano technology quantum dots or the zero dimensional nano structure they are also referred as artificial atoms so the pen hota na ga and many quantum dots of the three five semiconductor like gallium arsenide indium phosphide indium arsenide etc they are best on the spin properties of the single electron and we know the application of quantum dots they are in the single electron transistor solar cells leds quantum computing and medical imaging biomaterial is also a very attractive class of the materials where these uh, this field focuses on development of the materials to replace human tissues and almost all hum human organs the materials they include silicon rubber dichron silicon polyethylene hydrogen molybdenum titanium alumina right and characterization tools like the advanced microscope spectroscope microscopic testing equipment all they are useful in carrying out the material characterization investigation so materials chemistry and physics has become relatively easy with the aid of advanced characterization tools therefore when you look at the prospect or future of the metal science research we know we know sustained efforts of research of metal science is to design and discovery discovering the new materials but while doing this we need to take into account the fact that these materials should be lighter faster stronger smarter and durable and this can be uh, used by making use of characterization technique and these characterization techniques play a key role in designing or in changing a challenge of connecting processing and structure with properties and performance which has been shown as the corner stores of the material paradigm there are many in emerging trends as far as the emerging trends in material science is concerned here i would like to give a small list of the materials which are the prospective uh, trends in the material science research and they are silica aerogels conducting polymers polyurethane thin film devices 3d printing nano scale machining titanium in aerospace industry and perovskite solar cells silica aerogels we know these silica aerogels they are synthetic porous ultra light materials and only 0.2% solid that is silica and 99.8% air is there in the silica aerogels they are 99% transparent their density is very very low 0.001 g per cc and the applications main applications of these materials they are in thermal insulation liquid rocket propellants super capacitors catalysts active agents filling materials materials for tissue engineering and etc etc the future prospect of the silica aerogel or aerogel technology is these silica aerogels they are inorganic aerogels so people are working on the organic aerogels like rf aerogel they are called as resource in all formal diet aerogels and hybrid aerogels that is organic inorganic aerogels organo polysilane conducting polymers they this is the another emerging uh, field in which the research is continuously going on and these conducting polymers we know polymers they can be insulators semiconductors or metals and traditional plastics or polymers are the electrical insulators but the conducting polymers they can form a discriminating layer in the electronic chemical sensors so electrochemical chemical sensors are 
formed with the help of conducting polymers. The another field, fullerene, as you know, this is one of the altrop of the carbon, and this is used in the drug delivery system. And this also is a very attractive field. The field or the trend based upon the next generation memory and processor devices, based on the thin film technology, this also is a very attracting field. 3D field, 3D printing is used in molds for the jewelry or formation of a jewelry itself, gift industry or in fabrication of the personalized art. So this also is a very attractive uh, recent trend in material science research. Nanoscale machining, the material, the, it can be fabricated as per our architecture. So this architecture can be done with the help of nanoscale machining. Materials, structures and devices can be tailored. Titanium, which is the lightweight material, strongest material and versatile material. It is used in almost each part of the plane. You can see structural components, engine systems, door components, landing gears and wing components. There is titanium in the aerospace industry. This also is an emerging uh, field in the materials research. Perovskite. Perovskite is a AB2, ABO3 type of structure, and these perovskite materials they can be used either in inorganic solar cell, organic solar cell, all organic solar cell, or hybrid solar cell, organic inorganic solar cell material. So the the materials which are used in organic inorganic solar cell, they are methyl amanamanan, lead trihalide, or the material like TSSNI3, and this I have listed here. So, the most efficient band gap has been found to be 1.34 electron volt, and the maximum power conversion efficiency is around 34% with the help of perovskite type of solar cell. And this is also a very attractive field of the. So, this is the survey of the some fields of the material research and few material fields in which there are prospects in which you can do the research. Friends, I would like to tell something about the research. I would like to tell the thumbnail of the uh, thumb rule of the research. To be honest, there is no thumbnail of the thumb rule of the uh, research. And research is a generation of knowledge. So, Based upon some knowledge, we have some plan about uh, doing some research in our mind. We do research, we collect information, and this information acts as a knowledge, and this knowledge is given to the society back. So this is the uh, general trend in the research. Keep in mind, when you do a research in metal science, nothing is best. Any experiment, it is not a best. So what you should do, you should have the commitment and the constant efforts, uh, so far as the materials in uh, research in the material science is concerned, you need to update yourself because for quality research needs updated information. You need to publish your work not in the local uh, journals, but in the journals which are indexed in Scopus or Web of Science database. And while doing this, you need to follow research ethics very honestly. The purpose of such a gathering, the e-conference, which is conducted by Balan College Vita, is to, ins to inspire and to give the knowledge um, to the young researcher or the uh, scientist who are working in the various fields. But this inspiration and the knowledge should be converted into action. There are so many instruments available around you. They may be musical instruments or they may be the scientific instrument. They are large in number. But the, the bottleneck is they need to be used more. They need to be used more. Friends, coronavirus pandemic has a lot of dark side. No matter how serious and sad all of this is, but we should always look at the bright side 
of this pandemic or this difficult situation what we should do we should think the way innovative way of proceeding for that so i take this opportunity to thanks organizer to give the keynote address at this very uh, big gathering thank you thank you friends over to priyanka uh, thank you sir uh, for your uh, keynote address uh, now i would like to request our honorable principal uh, dr cj khilare sir uh, for pre presidential address over to pre, uh, principal sir पाठक सर हेलो पाठक सर Namaste. A very good morning to one and all. It gives me an immense pleasure to welcome you all in this national online seminar on recent trends in materials research. It is a glorious moment to extend my warm wishes as a principal of this college. I want to express my hearty congratulations to the esteemed delegates, Dr. K. Y. Rajpuri. Dr. Sanjay Gole and Dr. Jire. On the behalf of my esteemed institution, I warmly welcome to all the participants for their valuable presence and major responses from different corners of our nation to this online seminar. It's my honor to introduce the parent institute, Rayat Shikshan Samstha Sata. It is one of the leading educational institute in Asia. The value of its contribution to education in general is enormously great as it has from the very beginning tried all its best to lay emphasis on the education of the downtrodden, poor and those who are far away from education. The founder of institution, late Padma Bhushan, Dr. Karnavir Bharapati, was a man of masses who devoted all his mind and heart to the cause of education. He had an incisive understanding of the social ills that besets his times and fully realized the dire need to spread the education among the masses. He believed that education alone could rectify the social ills such as caste hierarchy, money lending, illiteracy, untouchability, superstitious and social and economical inequality. Today, 
the samstha is spread over in 15 districts of state and one districts of karnataka and it ha it has been conducting 43 different colleges seven training colleges 444 secondary schools and 62 primary schools altogether there are 769 different branches are being run by this distinguished institution there are 12965 employees working in this samstha the total number of students receiving education are more than 4.5 lakhs the above figure speaks all the phenomenal progress and achievements of the samstha as dreamt by dr padmabhushan kanveer bhava party the red section samstha along with people's cooperation started balwant college vita in 1963 owing to which the higher education has been made available for hundreds of students residing in the town vita and its adjoining villages whose right of higher education was used for by poverty thus proved to be a great boon for them the college has been named after the respected father of the nation let let the deputy prime minister of india and the first minister the college has been appellated to the college has provided it imparts education to the town poor sons and daughters of farmers and farm laborers the constant achievement in academics research extracurricular activities and social account accountability of the college resulted in achieving a grade with 3.1 cgpa by national assessment and accreditation council in bangalore during <laughs> college has received funding from various agencies like university grants commission Department of Science and Technology first the Rusa central and state governments recently college also receives ISO 9001 to 2015 certificate also today is the auspicious occasion of the online seminar conducted by department of physics it is a matter of great joy that the department of physics of our college is organizing such a national seminar on recent trends in materials research. For this achievement, I extend my hearty congratulations to the Head of Department, Dr. Bobre, the Faculty of the Department, Resource Persons and Academic Fraternity of the College and the participants who have participated in this national level activity. Webinars are occasions of great pride for colleges. I congratulate all the delegates to participate in this national level activity. Dear friends, today, three distinguishing personalities, Dr. Rajpure, Dr. Dole, and Dr. Jire, sir, are with us. We need to draw the inspiration from such resource persons. I'm glad to note that they have established several, several fields of research, which are vital to skilling our youths, generating a knowledge industry, and enhance employment. I congratulate and warm welcome these dignitaries for this respective achievement. Once again, I would like to welcome you all and wish you best luck for this national seminar, a national online seminar on recent trends in material science. Thank you, thank you very much. Dungle, sir. Hello. Ah. Dungle, sir. Mute your, unmute yourself. Dungle, sir. Hello. Ah. Ah. sir, I'm here. Ah. Hello. Good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Hello, Patek, sir. Ah, sir, bola. Um, I will request uh, uh, 
Dole sir to deliver his speech. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hello. Ah, hello. Uh, can I share screen now? Oh. Yes, sir. May I request you to deliver your talk? Okay. You can share screen, sir. Okay, fine. Okay. Okay, can you see uh, the... Yes, yes. Huh? Yes, yes, sir. Absolutely. There is no problem, right? Yes, yes. You can Okay, see. okay, okay. Okay, this is almost uh, uh, maybe 12 o'clock or so, more than that. Yeah. Uh, yes. <laughs> uh, despite of uh, uh, many hurdles, we have come <laughs> to a... Uh, good stream of uh, you know the webinar uh, the chairperson of uh, this particular uh, the seminar webinar is the principal of this college uh, dr kilare uh, to whom i know very well since the last 5 to 6 years or so because we have worked together uh, in the capacity of uh, RR Committee of Shivaji University. Uh, and uh, we have done a lot of work since he was the dean of a faculty. And uh, our friend, uh, the keynote speaker, uh, Professor Rajpure, who has really given very nice uh, the uh, talk uh, the keynote address and covered almost all the, uh, you know, the possible, uh, the future of the materials and their perspectives. And this is what uh, he has already uh, shown. Uh, the, uh, first of all, let me thanks the organizer, especially uh, Bobri sir, who is the head of the department of uh, uh, the physics, Balwant College, and Pathak sir, Shinde Madam, she is, of course, comparing this uh, particular webinar. Uh, this is all virtual, you know, it cannot be compared with the um, physical process. But still, we have to cope up with it because of this pandemic, uh, the situation of COVID-19. So, uh, everybody is trying to cope up with this kind of a mood. Uh, and I'm sure that uh, the in future also, because this semester, at least another six to four, six to seven months, till the vaccination comes into the picture. Uh, we have to be online, uh, almost all the teaching aids. So uh, uh, thank you very much for uh, being on, uh, giving me an, an opportunity to uh, deliver a lecture uh, uh, in this particular webinar on the recent trends in material science. As you can see uh, that uh, the title itself, the synthesis of uh, nanoparticles. Here I would say that uh, uh, the nanoparticles that I'm talking about, uh, I, I, I will talk about the metal and the semiconductor na nanoparticle by radiation method. Uh, radiation as such that we are uh, trying to uh, see the uh, electrons, ions, and the gamma radiation. And if possible, if time permits, then some of the applications of uh, the nanotechnology can be covered, but I don't think so. Uh, the time may be, uh, time may restrict to us, but I will try to cover uh, the synthesis uh, by radiation method and the radiation as almost the electrons, the ions and the gamma radiations. So uh, uh, the outline of the talk uh, will be as follows. The, what is nanoscale and that everybody knows because uh, I see the participant, most of the participants from the physics and it is more than 150. Uh, this is register one and maybe from YouTube also. Uh, and the why is the nanometer scale is different and the synthesis of nanometer is by radiation. Uh, synthesis of nanoparticles by electron, ion and gamma radiation and if possible, then the history of the nanotechnology, some of uh, the applications. But I, I don't think so, I may be able to cover this, but so we'll restrict up to the gamma synthesis of uh, 
the nanomaterials or the nanoparticles by gamma radiation. What is uh, the nanoscale? Because this is uh, my favorite picture, you know, and uh, which can be compared. Dole, sir. Ha. Dole, sir. Ha, ha, yes, sir. Screen, screen, you uh, 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 Dole, sir. Screen sharing. Okay, okay. Alaka? Is it okay? Yes, sir. Huh? yes sir. Is it okay? Fine. And uh, can everyone hear me? Yes. Huh? Very clearly. And uh, I request all of uh, to mute uh, their uh, the speaker audio, yeah. so that um, it will be audible. Everyone. Nice. Green this to kill it, sir. To mala. Hi, hi. We will see that, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, yes, yes. It is yes, okay, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, everything yeah. is okay, sir. You proceed now. Okay, yes, okay, sir. Yes. Okay, I will continue. So this is my favorite picture and I used to show it very often uh, during the presentation whenever it is uh, the on nanomaterials. And uh, I don't know whether um, the most of uh, the faculty knows me because I'm the nuclear physicist. Basically, I work on the accelerator and uh, the nuclear uh, the reactions. Uh, but I am the parasite in this particular field. Basically, you can't call me as an outsider, but uh, you know, uh, we are also doing some kind of work in radiation materials and uh, using the radiation, radiation materials, and some kind of materials like semiconductor, polymers, glass materials can be synthesized or their defects can be studied. This is what that's what we have deviated right from our basic core nuclear physics to the accelerator physics, to the material science. So that is what I'm able to show you some of the results which are based on the nanomaterial. And uh, I, I will, I will uh, let you know as uh, this particular uh, the presentation move forward. So this is a picture which shows that uh, the earth size of the earth and which goes down to the, uh, you know, fullerene C60, uh, which has the 0.7 to 10 power minus 9 million, which is 1 billion times smaller than the football, which has a dimension of 0.22 uh, the meter. So this is another picture which uh, I used to show it, the scale uh, of the nanometers and more, the things naturally made and things uh, the man-made. Uh, the things naturally which are available as you know, because uh, uh, you know, uh, the nature has already taken care of Developing some some na the uh, the nano uh, the devices devices in the sense of organs I would say so here the size of the ant itself the uh, five millimeter and if you go down to uh, the dermite uh, this is two hundred micrometer and if you go down because human uh, air hair is itself is sixty two one twenty micrometer or in wide and if you go down to this then you know the size of uh, the DNA itself is 2 to 12 nanometer in diameter. And uh, this is what uh, the things which are available in nature and in human body itself, where, and which are uh, uh, you know, working very effectively uh, in, uh, years to years uh, without taking any kind of a break and uh, very efficiently. So at a nanoscale, very, uh, the, these kind of organs are working. But things which are man-made and uh, the scientists who are trying to replicate this kind of a organs in the uh, laboratory, uh, I would say that the team head of the pin, the dimension is just one to two millimeter. And uh, if you go down to this, then there will be a carbon buckyball, which has a one nanometer diameter. and the, as uh, the Professor Rajpuri has already mentioned about uh, the carbon nanotubes, uh, the, is, which has a dimension of the order of one to three nanometer. And the scientists who are, uh, you know, uh, able to develop this kind of a carbon buckyball in the laboratory and be used uh, for various applications as far as not only the industries, but also the medical. And uh, you can see that the nanotechnology or the nanomaterials has a wide application uh, in the medical field. Uh, they should have been one of the talk, uh, you know, uh, the dedicated to the medical application. But maybe next time we'll have this kind of a 
talk in the medical application of NATO, the nano materials and the technology. So why is the nano material scale different? Uh, there are some basic aspects, the basic things. The wave-like properties of electrons inside matter are influenced by variations on the nano material scale. Uh, when you come down to the nano material, the electron properties which are changing and which matters to have this kind of a nano scale materials. And the systematic organization of matter on the nanometer, nanometers length scale is a key feature of the biological system as well. And uh, the, of course, nanoscale component uh, have very high surface areas. And uh, this is what it is importance of the nanomaterials. And the finite size of uh, material entities determine an increase of uh, the relative importance of the surface tension and the local electromagnetic effect. And uh, the last one which uh, uh, differ uh, for the, at this particular scale is the interaction wavelength scales of various extreme wave phenomena, which is comparable uh, to the material entity size. So uh, from bulk to, you know, if you come down uh, to the nanoscale, then which their property enormously changes due to the uh, change in the surface area or the surface to volume ratio or the uh, so nano size uh, effect is uh, uh, realization of miniaturized devices on the system uh, and of course attainment of the surface area to uh, the volume ratio uh, the, there are the manifestation of noise phenomena of the properties uh, including changes like physical properties, chemical properties, electrical properties, mechanical properties, optical properties. I, I have just given as an example uh, the, for physical properties and melting point, there are many more, of course. And for chemical, it is reactive re reactivity, conductivity in case of electric properties, and the mechanical property is strength, and the optical property is light emission. It's just an, as an example. But there are many more for all these kinds of the properties. And you know, when you come down to the nanoscale, and definitely uh, there is a change in this kind of a property, and uh, which lead to some of the applications. So synthesis of nanomaterials by different routes. Uh, uh, the, there are three routes usually uh, the scientists follow: uh, the physical, chemical, biological. Uh, the physical uh, the process which has been adopted by the physicist, the chemistry of the chemical process may be chemistry, chemist and the biological by biologist. But you know, because of the interdisciplinary nature of uh, this kind of uh, nano uh, the field, uh, the chemical, the, uh, the chemistry people who also use the physical process, the physicist who also use the chemical process. And nowadays, both of them are using a biological aspect also. And the biological people also interfering into uh, the physical and the chemical process. That is depending on what kind of the synthesis that they require and the, for what application. So that is what uh, uh, it depends on uh, the researcher at what uh, the process or the what the method that he or she has to adopt it. Uh, so physical process, there are the mechanical and the vapor and their radiation. The mechanical is high energy ball milling, melt mixing. And the physical is vapor. In the case of physical vapor deposition, desert uh, ablation, sputter deposition, these are the methods which are available for the synthesis. We have introduced recently, uh, as uh, I, I would like to mention about this irradiation process, and which is one of the physical process, I would say. And uh, this has been introduced by ourselves, our group, uh, Professor Boraskar and myself. Uh, and we report, we were the first who reported this particular irradiation method uh, using electron. And uh, the successfully we have synthesized metal nanoparticle and reported in uh, the nanotechnology journal. And it was cited very uh, rigorously, uh, cited by many uh, other researchers. So uh, we actually initiated to introduce this particular irradiation method. And now we have extended uh, this process uh, to uh, the, uh, apart from the electron, we introduced to ion, gamma, and neutron. Neutron, I would not say that, but it is indirect process. Neutron has, it is uh, not having any kind of a charge, it is neutral. So it doesn't go under any kind of a Coulombic scattering. 
So uh, if you really want to you know, synthesize material, uh, the nanomaterial by using radiation, so it, uh, the uh, radiation uh, should be charged uh, and it should go under the Coulombic scattering so the energy can be deposited. But the neutron which goes interact with the nucleus and uh, form a nuclear reaction and it emerges, it emits uh, the alpha particle and the proton or the gamma radiation. And then this proton and the alpha particle are being used to synthesize the material. This is what the indirect process where the neutron can also be effectively used for uh, the uh, synthesis of the nanomaterial. And the chemical is, as usual, it is Sozel, inverse missiles, LB missiles, collides. And biological is a bimembrane. Uh, and uh, uh, of course, they are using extraction method from uh, the various plants and the, uh, the cells, DNA enzymes, and the microorganisms. So irradiation method, they, uh, I, I will uh, talk uh, about the electron irradiation, ion irradiation, and the gamma irradiation. But before that, uh, the, uh, I would just uh, uh, try to focus on the electron, uh, the irradiation process. Uh, we're having electron accelerator. And uh, we have taken that advantage to introduce this particular method. Uh, once we sat together uh, with Professor Boraskar and uh, we discussed that uh, people are using uh, various methods to synthesize uh, the nanomaterials. Why not to use this particular 6 MeV electron? And then we tried and uh, we got uh, the success and uh, reported accordingly. Uh, this is uh, the, uh, the top view of the electron accelerator called Microtron and it's a control console. And this is a schematic view of the microphone and this is extracted from where the electron which, which comes out of it. And the, of course, the electron energy which can be varied from one to six MeV with a good current and it's a pulse electron wave. Okay. So before going into all the details, uh, because how the electron uh, interaction is takes place, because if you want to really synthesize some energy is, is to be deposited in the material. And that energy is being utilized to synthesize that particular material. There are two methods which are very important. The energy is getting deposited and or the energy which is getting transferred to the atom and, and they're generating at the, the uh, local temperature and the local temperature is getting raised. And then there is an accumulation of this kind of a few atoms comes together and they form a nanoparticle. There are uh, two, three kind of a theories which has come up because of this kind of a radiation. So before going into uh, the actual uh, the synthesis process, I would just uh, go for uh, the atomic, the uh, interaction process of the electron. Uh, for, there are four ways through which the electron interacts with the matter or the material uh, through which it passes through it. One is inelastic collision with atomic electrons and atomic nucleus and elastic collision with atomic electrons and atomic nucleus. So this two first two inelastic collision is more predominant as compared to the elastic. This is cross section for this particular uh, two processes very, very small. And uh, the inelastic process, so the energy is getting deposited by the electron uh, in the medium is through these uh, two processes that is inelastic collision with atomic electrons and the atomic nucleus. So we'll just, uh, we'll just put it uh, this way. Uh, what is uh, uh, this, uh, the uh, inelastic collision with atomic electron that is also called as electronic loss or excitation or the ionization. If the incoming electron is having a very small, the insufficient energy to just excite the electrons from lower shell to the, uh, the upper shell or from the water shell to the, but still it has a binding with the nucleus and then it can come down to and take its own place. Because of this excitation, the incoming, uh, the electron has to loss, lose some sort of energy. And this is what it is called as the excitation process. In another process, the, uh, the uh, sufficient, sufficient energy is uh, given uh, to the outermost electrons to dislodge or to take out uh, the electrons and become free from the atom itself. That is called as an ionization. And this is what it is called as an inelastic collision uh, with electron that is called as the ionization and the excitation. So this also we call in terms of DE by by DX due to excitation and the ionization. So most of the predominant, okay, the energy which is getting deposited uh, by electron using this uh, process. 
Another one is, is very important because the energy, as I said, it is 6 mV or varied from 1 to 6 mV is very high energy. So when incident electrons, because it has a negative charge and the, the, the nucleus has a positive charge, so there is an attractive force. But because of it has a very large momentum, it just deaccelerates under the uh, nuclear field. And because of the deacceleration, it provides a brain cell radiation. So that is what it is called as a radiative loss. And uh, uh, this particular graph which shows that the DE by by dx versus the energy. And where you can see that there is an ionization loss and there is a radiative loss. And this is what it is cumulative. So whenever, when you, uh, you know, uh, play with this kind of a uh, electron beam having energy 6 MeV in some sort of kind of a material silicon, then we can use to, uh, you know, calculate there how much Dole sir, Dole sir, unmute Karana Dida. Hi, Eto Eka Sarata was? Oh, Eto Eto. Yes, okay, okay, sorry. Huh? Please you uh, in, um, interrupt me whenever you find some problem. Huh? Yeah. Okay, so uh, this is uh, the synthesis of nanoparticle using 6 mV electron radiation. Uh, the objective was to, uh, you know, to develop MEV energy electron irradiation method for the synthesis of metal and semiconductor nanoparticle. And uh, we synthesize nanoparticles of uh, the silver, gold, and copper uh, in uh, solution. Uh, actually, uh, we thought that because, uh, you know, in usual process, either it is physical, chemical process, uh, when you really synthesize nanoparticle, there you use uh, the capping agent or uh, the stabilizer. Uh, we thought that because it's a direct process, you just prepare a solution and expose with the electron beam. So we just prepare a solution without any capping we, and you just increase the fluence level and then just see there is a formation of the nanoparticles. And we tried this particular experiment initially. No capping agent was used. And uh, the solution was filled in the thin wall glass bottle and the glass bottle was mounted on the Faraday cup. And the solution was irradiated with six MeV electrons. And the, accordingly, the fluence, electron fluence, which is measured in terms of electrons per centimeter square, was varied. Uh, so the, uh, before going uh, to that particular setup, uh, I would just like you to tell you the mechanism how that electron, when they pass through the solution, deposit their energy, and their energy is getting converted into the formation of the nanoparticle. Here, basically, the water molecules gets converted into radicals, that is OH, OH, and the aqueous electrons, along with the hydrogen peroxide, and the metal salt, which is converted into the metal ions. This is a capping agent. Uh, initially, it is not uh, being used, but uh, uh, for uh, this uh, formation of this uh, synthesis of the nanoparticles, we need to have this capping agent or the stabilizer. Here we have this polyenal alcohol. When they encounter with these radicals like OH and H, they form a H2 and H2, H2O and H2 molecules. Further, this metal ions, which has been converted from the metal salt, Ions electron capture cross section is very high, and therefore a large number of neutral metal atoms can be produced because this the aqueous electron, which are free in nature, get encountered with the metal ions and form a neutral metal uh, the particle, and this neutral um, the neutral metal atom can encounter with the excess metal ions these ions, and tends to have a M two plus. And this is M in minus plus M plus and M in plus. So this is what it is called as the formation of the nanoparticles. And this is what the basic mechanism when you use any kind of a charged particle in terms of the radiation pass through the medium, either it is going to uh, you know, synthesize the gold nanoparticle or silver nanoparticle or copper nanoparticle, you just have to pass the uh, beam 
through this, and then you see that there is a formation of the nanoparticle through this particular mechanism. So uh, this is a microtron, the schematic, uh, the sketch, and this is an extractor. This is a Faraday cup where we have mounted the sample bottle, and this Faraday cup, the six MeV electron beam is uh, coming from the extractor. Uh, this is the following solution where you use the silver nanoparticle. The AgNO3 was dissolved in distilled water. And uh, the solution was filled in glass water. This is what the sample bottle. This is a transparent initially. And the electron frequency was varied from bottle to bottle in the range from 10 to 14 to 10 to 15 electron per centimeter square. And for a gold nanoparticle, the chloroquic was dissolved in distilled uh, water. And this solution was again filled into this kind of a bottle, which was again transparent. And the fluence, which was varied from 10 to 15 to 10 to 15 electrons per centimeter. So this is what just wanted to do it. Because this is not a laborious method, but only you need to have an accelerator. You need to have an irradiation source where you can you know, prepare this kind of a, uh, just to prepare a solution and expose with the radiation. So the electron irradiation solution was dried to obtain powder of the nanoparticle. In this manner, powder of AG and AU nanoparticle could be obtained. And uh, the electron, uh, the, uh, the synthesized powder were characterized by this X-ray diffraction. So what we thought that after exposure, then we dried that particular solution, uh, drop cast method and made a thin film for the X-ray diffraction. And this is one of the best technique ever to see that uh, this is a right hand information we can obtain uh, this ACM and the XRD. XRD, which uh, you know, uh, revealed that there is a formation of the nanoparticle, the structure we show the FCC structure, this is for AG and this is for AU. And the uh, particle size, which was obtained 90 to 250 nanometer in case of AG nanoparticle, and in case of uh, the cold nanoparticle, 60 to 100 nanometer. This is a crystallized size that we could uh, calculate uh, using Scherer's formula. This was uh, one of the right hand uh, the method where you can see that there is a formation of the nanoparticles or not. But, <coughs> but we could also confirm uh, by using ACM where we observed that at the uh, fluence level of 10 over 13 electron per centimeter square, the particle size of uh, the na nanoparticle was increased 90 to 110 nanometer. And uh, when you increase uh, the fluence up to 10 or 15, then it was increased, you know. And even in the, the same strain was observed in case of uh, the gold nanoparticle. Uh, as you go on increasing the fluence level from 10 or 14 to 10 or 15, we observed that the particles has increased from 50 to 80 or 70 to 100 uh, nanometer. Uh, this is this was initially, as I said, it was uh, without capping or without stabilizer. So what we observe that we increase the as you go on increasing the fluence level, then we uh, observe that there is an increase in the uh, size of the nanoparticle, and we should not have uh, this kind of a nanoparticle which where the size should increase. We have we should have the size of the nanoparticle where it should be controlled on the uh, fluence level, uh, as you go on using the fluence level of the electron, where the uh, particle size should decrease. So then another experiment that we could try. Uh, so this result indicates that the particle size, large size were synthesized and the size varied from 90 to 200 nanometer. Actually. This is this was without uh, the stabilizer. Uh, the synthesis of small size, uh, the AGAU and copper nanoparticle. In this case, what we used, uh, we added uh, PVA, that's a polyvinyl alcohol, as a stabilizer uh, into the respective solution. Solution was the same, only the PVA was added and they exposed with the radiation. This was the, uh, the same, uh, the sample bottle where uh, the PVA, this polyvinyl alcohol was uh, used as a stabilizer. And the fluence which was kept the same, that is 10 power 13 to 10 power 15 electron centimeters for uh, the AG and uh, for AU and the copper nanoparticle. So this is the first hand information that we obtained. Uh, the, uh, the optical that we can see that uh, in case of AG, there is a coloration change and the coloration, the change in the coloration itself show 
uh, that there is a formation of the nanoparticle. Okay, so when it receives 10 power 15 electrons per centimeter square, there is a brownish kind of a color, and this brownish of a color it is because of the shift in the wavelength uh, of the uh, particle size. Uh, depending on it may be a blue shift or uh, that uh, that has to be. Uh, you know, confirmed with the help of some characterization technique. But this itself shows if there is a change in the coloration, there is a formation of the nanoparticle. And in case of AU, uh, the gold, uh, uh, you know, there is a, the, the, there is a dark, uh, the brown, uh, which was observed uh, after the receiving of 10 power 15 electron per centimeter square. Uh, this is the, uh, the, we confirm by taking UV, uh, the spectroscopy, and there we, and uh, there we could observe the surface SPR, surface plazon peak for a particular AG and AU. Uh, this was around 400 on, uh, this is around uh, 400 nanometer or so. So as you go on using the fluence, we observe that there is a decrease in the, uh, there is, there was a blue shift. So there is a decrease in the wavelength and the blue shift itself will show that there's a decrease in the size of the nanoparticle because according to the Mie theory, or my theory, then you can see that uh, it depends on the shape of uh, the SPR and there is shift in the wavelength and then you can always calculate the size of the nanoparticle. Uh, Dole sir, unmute, unmute Kara. Ah, sir, unmute. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, okay. So this is all together uh, for uh, the AG, AU and copper nanoparticle, where uh, the peak position of that particular SPR is uh, found to be decreased as you go on introducing the uh, electron frequency. Uh, uh, this again, we uh, confirm uh, that uh, for uh, the uh, fluence level of 10 power 13 electron per centimeter square, the size of the nanoparticle was around 60 to 9 uh, nanometer. And this is a mono disperse, and it has come down to this. And this is an electron diffraction, which also shows that the excess structure of that uh, particular AG. And this is for uh, the gold. And this is all together. Uh, uh, this picture is for 10 power 14 electron per centimeter square, and this picture is for 10 power 15 electron per centimeter square, and you can see that it is quite mono uh, distance, and uh, the uh, you know for 10 10 power 15 electron per centimeter square, the particle size has gone down to 10 12 nanometer in case of uh, the uh, the uh, silver, in case of gold it is 3 nanometer, and in case of copper it is 60 nanometer. 16 nanometer and uh, we have also observed this uh, their stability we have kept it as it is for a three to four months so there is no uh, you know we ob we observe that there is no change in the size of the nanoparticle it remained as it is this is what the stability of the nanoparticle itself it shows uh, very nicely over the time and uh, uh, this is for the xrd the spectrum where the which also confirm the crystallite size around 60 nanometer for AG and the 10 nanometer for uh, the uh, uh, this is for uh, the gold and this is for copper where uh, it observed for 50 nanometer to 3 nanometer and this is 30 to 17 nanometer. So this particular result show that uh, the uh, particles of relatively large size from 60 nanometer to 200 nanometer could be synthesized. And in the presence of PAA, uh, you know, uh, the AG nanoparticle that we could achieve. Ah, sir, unmute kara, sir, unmute kara. Kasa hota hai, sir, bhaik ne mele? I don't know. Click hota, sir, sir, tum jagadun. Ho ka? Varo, varo. Thik hai, thik. Okay, so uh, so uh, this is uh, another, uh, this is for about the metal nanoparticles that we could uh, successfully done the experiment is in radiation, uh, so six maybe electron uh, beam. Uh, so we also thought that one or two uh, 
use the semiconductor and the material and synthesis the uh, nanomaterial. So we have selected uh, cadmium sulfide, zinc sulfide, and the silicon as such. But I will just let you know very quickly about uh, the result of the serious nanoparticle. Uh, the uh, here uh, the serious nanoparticle solution was capable of dissolving cadmium chloride and uh, the cadmium sulfide in ethanol. The capping agent that we used one uh, thioglycerol and the electron flux as uh, which we kept it constant that is 1 into 10 power 14 to 10 power 15 electron per centimeter squared and the same bottle which was kept in the same uh, the procedure which was followed and this is before radiation the uh, solution of uh, uh, the prepared solution of the semiconductor material was like this that is cadmium sulfide and when it received uh, the fluence level of the order of 10 power 14 electron per centimeter square then it the so color has changed and the color itself which shows that there is a formation of diesel. And this is the pale and dark yellow color of serious nanoparticle synthesized in ethanol uh, at the fluence level of 10 power 14 uh, to 10 power 15 electron per centimeter square. This is the mechanism, why? Because this is different than what we have uh, done in case of metal nanoparticle, okay? Uh, here is the same case because uh, uh, there is H2 which uh, uh, where the energy is getting deposited by the electron uh, into the uh, formation of the E, e solvent and then hydroxyls or the, uh, the radicals like HOH and the hydrogen peroxide. So this uh, the uh, there is cadmium which is available in uh, the ionic form and the electron solvent which is in free nature encounter with the CD and make it CD plus and this uh, cadmium sulfide which this uh, the uh, dissociate into S minus plus CS and then then this S minus and this CD plus which comes together to form a CDS this is what it is and in another case this S the uh, S minus that is sulfur minus encounter with the electron and it becomes S2 minus and S2 minus and CD2 plus again encounter with the CD. There are two, three kind of a mechanism which takes place to form a uh, nanoparticles. N number of CDS you know, atoms comes together to form a uh, nanoparticle. And as you go on, it is in the fluence, as I said, it comes down uh, to the size of the nanoparticle. This uh, mechanism is quite different in case of uh, what we have seen in case of metal uh, than the uh, what we have just now seen in case of the metal nanoparticle. So we have checked uh, the uh, their optical the spectroscopy X diffraction and their TM that we have taken. The uh, optical absorption spectroscopy of uh, serious nanoparticle. Uh, this is exotonic uh, the peak. This is not the SPR SPR that we could observe in case of metal nanoparticle itself. But this is a semiconductor. So this is at the uh, uh, this is exotonic uh, the peak. So as you go on to the fluence, there is a red shift that has been observed. And uh, this is the uh, you know, cadmium sulfate, uh, which shows the hexagonal uh, uh, the structure, which also, uh, because uh, this is solution, which was dropped, casted on the glass material and then dried accordingly. And then the XRD was taken and then we could show that there is a hexagonal uh, the structure of the serious nanoparticle. And this is a TM, uh, this is XRD also which shows the hexagonal and uh, uh, the, uh, these are the nanoparticle that we could observe. Uh, the scale itself is 100 nanometer. So that uh, uh, this histogram itself which shows that there is a deviation in the formation of the nanoparticle is one to six nanometer. This is uh, uh, by, we could observe in, by taking uh, the transmission electron micrograph. So, ion accelerator. Bobre, sir, how many people have been here? Five minutes, ten minutes? No, sir, say it to me. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So, so this is ion accelerator. Uh, so far, what we have discussed about uh, the electron, uh, the Russian electron setup, where? 
the electron beam was uh, used very effectively to synthesize the metal and the semiconductor nanoparticle. But we also thought that uh, uh, why not to use the ion beam and uh, the gamma radiation. Then we did uh, the separate experiment for them. Uh, of course, uh, the, uh, for ion, uh, we need to, uh, to have uh, the heavy ions and there should, the energy should be more than the 50 MeV. Then we thought to use the uh, IUSC, that is Inter-University Accelerator Center, the facet earlier it was renamed, uh, uh, it was earlier called as a Nuclear Science Center and this is called as a Pelletron, 15 UD Pelletron. Uh, this is a schematic. Uh, here there is an ion source, RF ion source, from where the ions comes out of it. There's a negative ions, which uh, this is injector magnet, and uh, this is a terminal voltage. Here is a 15 volt. The negative ion also accelerate up to 15 MeV, and then there is a steeper carbon steeper, uh, which has a thickness is around uh, maybe very few uh, nanometer. Uh, through which this 15 negative ions, 15 mu negative ions goes from this and stripped out all these electrons and this becomes ions and which has a different charge state and then accordingly if you uh, analyze this particular magnet and uh, at what energy that you want because this is the energy versus Vt, Vt is a terminal voltage and uh, this Vt is terminal voltage is 50 mega hold and this is 1 plus Q, this is Vt plus uh, Q MeV. So, charge state, suppose uh, if you have AG8 plus or AG7 plus, then charge state, charge state will be here, here, here there will be 7 and multiply by 15 MeV or 5 multiply by 15, 45 plus 15, that is 60 MeV will be the energy of the uh, ion beam. And this is what the way that the energy of the, uh, uh, the heavy ions can be calculated. And uh, for this particular, uh, you know, work uh, that we have selected the silver ion having energy up to 100 MeV. And we did experiment on some, uh, the structure like uh, the uh, indium oxide and then tried to form a nano formations. But before that, just uh, within one minute, I will let you know the, how the ions which are interact with the medium. Okay, so this is the surface of the material. And this is the ions, which is uh, the charged ion. And which has, uh, uh, say for example, it has 50 MeV is the energy and the velocity is 10 power 8 uh, the uh, centimeter per second. When it interacts and goes to the surface, because of the surface and the high momentum is transferred. So there is a stripping of the electrons from its ions itself. All electrons will get stripped out and then this becomes a bare ion. And uh, these electrons will never come and join this because the velocity of these electrons is very, very small as compared to the velocity of the, of the ion. But because of this process, uh, these uh, ions has lost its energy. And when it lost its energy because of the trans transition, then it's, uh, there is a decline, it declines its velocity as well. So when the velocity of the electrons which are moving in the orbit, the uh, electrons which are moving in the orbit of the atom of the target and the velocity of the ions is comparable, then electrons easily join and neutralize them. And when the, uh, these ions get neutralized, its energy is around to be 100 electron volt. And uh, velocity is maybe 10 for 2 uh, so the centimeter per second. And these which transfer its energy easily to these atoms and created defects at the end of its trajectory. So when it starts from the surface to this depth, this is called as the electronic loss. And at the end of trajectory, there is a formation of the defect that is called as a nuclear loss. And the total loss is, it is nothing but the electronic loss on the physics. This is what the way that the ions, which deposits is energy in the medium. Because it requires very high energy, it is 50 MeV, it goes up to 100 MeV as well. And, uh, you know, uh, the depth, uh, depth is uh, which can go up to few microns, the few, few micrometer, depending on the type of the species and the type of the energy. And then accordingly, the, you can calculate the projected range uh, where you can have the formation of the nanoparticle. Uh, this is uh, the incoming, uh, the uh, radiation charged, uh, the ions. 
and then uh, uh, you know it stripped out all the electrons this is a bare ion this is what it is called a naked ion and uh, the for this naked ion the electrons uh, from the target atom would join and neutralize them and then damage we successively provide this is uh, totally different from the electron interaction electron is a light particle this is heavy particle this is like a heavy particle which goes into the medium or uh, going into the uh, surface of the medium so uh, this is electronic and nuclear energy loss which played very important role uh, while depositing this energy this is incoming primary ion uh, this green line which is nothing but the electronic energy loss mechanism and this dotted uh, you know uh this is nuclear energy loss which is very very small as compared to the electronic loss and we also have uh, done this uh, the depth profile also have been calculated so at the end of trajectory you have uh, the more number of defects which has been produced and this particular simulation which has been done by using trim program and the trim, trim program which is available which shows uh, all kinds of information which required uh, for the synthesis of the nanomaterials like electron excitation the electron energy loss nuclear energy loss struggling range projected range and so on and so forth okay so everything is uh, you know there in the trim program and the same program is for electron trim program is for ion and this is what the way that uh, the you can always have a right hand data to calculate everything for you so this is just uh, 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 you know synthesis of uh, this just to show you uh the how uh, the ions uh, which are taking part uh, in formation of the nano uh, particles uh, so this is synthesis of indium oxide nano particles by swift heavy ions uh, this is iofilm this is indium oxide uh, uh, this is uh, the thickness is 100 nanometer and this is uh, between the si and the io is this uh, there is a sioh that is silicon dioxide and th there is a, some uh, preparation method which has been uh, followed uh, by this uh, the io thin film were irradiated with 100 mv ag8 plus ions with the fluence of 10 to 14 ions per centimeter square because uh, we have taken uh, the uh, silver ion beam from the pelletron uh, having energy 100 mv and we have given a 10 to 14 ions per centimeter square so this is the Mm, uh, this is in the beam line. This is a Faraday cup where this particular structure, which was irradiated with the uh, 100 mEV uh, ion beam. Okay, uh, so uh, this is all to, uh, uh, together. Uh, this is the electronic loss, and the most of the electronic loss which is being used to form the nano formation when they pass through this particular medium. Uh, so uh, this uh, nano formation which takes place because of the two basic mechanisms one is the thermal spike and one and another one is the coulomb uh, the spike uh, these are the two models which are available but uh, usually in this kind of a semiconducting material then there is a thermal spike model thermal spike model is being adopted because it deposited energy in a continuous fashion and around that there is a formation of the defects and the local temperature is increased so high there is a formation of the nanoparticles and this is what uh, the simulation which has already been done for this particular io uh, the indium oxide thin film and uh, the, this particular uh, the structure basically and, and this has been of course characterized the x-ray diffraction and the tm and the xrd uh, this the last week this is silicon base one and uh, this is uh, the kind of uh, the you know uh, the uh, rombo handrel uh, the uh, i think uh, uh, this is i this is cubic kind of a thing uh, which has been uh, shown the structure uh, and uh, the formation of uh, this is acm image of the pristine indium oxide this is a pristine uh, deposited as it is and this b1 is uh, the after irradiation of 100 mv ag uh, the ions at the fluence of 10 for 14 uh, electron per centimeter square and uh, uh, the formation of the nanoparticle you know uh, is uh, very strong uh, the 20 nanometer to uh, 
the, the uh, 90 nanometer, but with the peak, uh, with the peak of uh, the 30 nanometer on an average, uh, this is what the nanoparticle which is getting formed uh, with the help of uh, the uh, heavy ion like uh, the 100 MeV Ag silver ion. And uh, this is uh, the all, uh, the synthesis of 100 nanometer is irradiated in the indium oxide sample. Uh, the B is HRTM, which has been taken up, and the EDX, which the confirm that the ratio of the indium and the oxide this is a 35 to 65. So there is a, uh, it has been confirmed uh, that there is a formation of the indium, uh, the oxide, uh, the nanoparticle. And the last one is uh, the gamma irradiation. Uh, this is again a very specific result, which I'm going to show you. Uh, this is a gamma chamber which is available on the campus. Uh, it is in the chemistry department. And uh, this is a cobalt 60 which decays into nickel uh, with beta decay. Having two gammas, energy of 1.117 MeV and 1.33 MeV. So uh, it's a dose rate is, uh, you know, uh, the 0.13 megarad per uh, minute. And uh, this is a schematic sketch. So this is uh, uh, the motor where you can put the sample which goes inside and uh, which you can irradiate the sample. So interaction basically, uh, if, if you want to ask me what is the difference between the electron and the gamma. Gamma though it does not carry any kind of a charge, but the, uh, the process of uh, the formation of the nanoparticle is the same as that we have done in case of electron. Why? Because uh, the gamma radiation though it does not uh, any kind of charge, but it interacts in an indirect way with the medium. That is photoelectric effect, Compton scattering, and pair production. With these three process, it you know eject the electrons. Even in case of photoelectron effect, it ejects electrons. In case of Compton scattering, it ejects electrons. And that electrons has the sufficient energy to deposit energy in the medium, and that forms a nanoparticles. So, what are these are the three processes? photoelectric effect, Compton scattering, and the pair production. This is a very simple photoelectric effect. When we have a gamma radiation, if you take out the electrons from the core shell, and subsequently which is filled up by this, and there is the X-ray, and this is this electron, which carries a kinetic energy of the order of few MeV. Okay, and this is the X-ray. X-ray is anyway uh, not useful. But uh, if X-ray is getting absorbed by the outermost orbit, that is called as the OJ electron. And the OJ electron is uh, carrying uh, energies of the order of 100 electron, electron volt to 1 kV. And that is not sufficient to form a nanoparticle. Only the direct uh, the impact of the gamma radiation on the core shell electron and eject, and that kinetic energy is being used. In case of quantum effect, and this is what the cross-section is more for this, you know, uh, uh, this is the gamma is getting scattered, and the some uh, the rest of the energy is transferred to this electron, and that is called as a Compton scattering. And uh, the you know the uh, the cross section for this Compton scattering is more in case of this, and the energy of the kinetic energy of the Compton electron is more than the photoelectric effect, and that. Uh, suppose the gamma energy is 1.17 uh, or 1.33 MeV, then the average energy of the kinetic energy of the Compton effect, uh, Compton electron is uh, 0.5 MeV. And 0.5 MeV is sufficient energy to deposit in the medium of the solution of the electron, uh, the, of the uh, medium where the, the synthesis can be, nanosynthesis can be done. And this is the pair production, where if the energy of the uh, gamma radiation is more than 1.022 MeV, then there is a formation of the electron and the positron. And positron cannot stay much longer time because lifetime of the positron is very, very small. That is 10 power minus 8 seconds. The moment it, it creates, it encounters with the electron and they the combined and there is an annihilation takes place. So this electron carries a kinetic energy, sufficient kinetic energy to deposit the further energy. But if you uh, see that this cross section, the coefficient and versus energy, the Compton effect has more cross section. So the most of the electrons which are generated due to the, due to the Compton scattering process. 
and the average energy is uh, around 0.5 to 0.7 MeV, and that is more than sufficient to synthesize the metal. So that is what the whatever that we have discussed in case of six MeV electron, the same mechanism can be applied in case of gamma radiation. So I'll just put forth uh, the one result, uh, and then uh, definitely uh, I'll stop it. Uh, the synthesis of uh, the gold nanoparticles by gamma irradiation. The synthesis of nanocomposite. This is a material which has been uh, the the solution was the solution which has is prepared. It is a solution of aniline in uh, uh, the one mole of SCL and 0.005 of uh, the single wall nanotubes and uh, CT AB. This is CT uh, AB is nothing but cetyl uh, the uh, triethyl ammonium bromide which was also uh, the added and sonicated for one hour and uh, subsequently this particular solution was irradiated with gamma radiation coming from the cobalt 16 and uh, total dose which was given is three kilogram under the atmospheric pressure and the room temperature so uh, all these techniques you know all this three radiation process has uh, the advantage that uh, it doesn't require any kind of uh, ambient the process. Uh, it it uh, uh, you know uh, it can be done at the room temperature at the standard uh, the pressure and the uh, the conditions whatever that we require. Uh, so this is the gamma chamber uh, where the solution is getting prepared and put it into the chamber the motor and the there are the gamma ratios that come in getting exposed with this. And we it has been received around three kilogram. Uh, the mechanism as the same as that we have discussed in case of uh, the electron, the acquires the uh, the, uh, the radicals and uh, the aqueous electrons which has been produced along with the hydrogen peroxide, which encounter with the uh, the electrons which encounter with the chloroquic and made it uh, the uh, two minus. And then uh, the uh, which encounter with the aniline, and then further polymerization is taken, polyaniline which is taking place. So this is the mechanism uh, all together. And uh, this uh, the particular the solution which was again uh, uh, the prepared in terms of uh, the formation of the samples, and then we have taken the TM, XRD, and optical absorption. Uh, the here the TM which shows. Uh, that uh, this here the scale bar is C. This is C magnified part of one gold nanoparticle. This is, and uh, it is around uh, you know five nanoparticle, uh, which is uh, five nanometer, which comes around to be here. Uh, and uh, this is X-ray diffraction. This X-ray pattern of single wall nano uh, tubes. This is Pani, uh, decorated with gold, and they uh, prepared using. Uh, the C uh, method, uh, and which has, of course, the confirmed that there is a formation of by uh, using the Scherer forms and the calculating the crystallite size. This is the optical absorption spectroscopy is, is also uh, shown uh, to be a single wall nanoparticle Pani. Indexing B is uh, the you know single uh, wall nanoparticle transferred along with the gold and uh, the prepared by uh, gamma uh, radiation and uh, the uh, pristine uh, and we have compared with the pristine one uh, where the formation of this kind of a uh, this is very different kind of uh, uh, material we have not uh, you, you know. Uh, only synthesizes metal nanoparticles semiconductor with the help of, uh, but we are, uh, you know, introduce the single wall nano and uh, some of the CTB uh, and uh, the Pani kind of thing and then decorated along with the, by irradiation of the gamma uh, radiation. So uh, I think uh, I will not uh, move uh, further because this is just uh, the uh, some slides which shows uh, about the nanotechnology and uh, there's some the applications uh, of the nanotechnology but what i have uh, uh, you know uh, shown this particular technique which has not been used uh, widely by uh, many people uh, or many scientists
but those who are having accelerated and uh, because as you know that uh, we are having this kind of accelerator uh, in the country uh, the tfr and uh, the ius is having pelotron and uh, if you write uh, uh, this you know, the, you know there is a but you are or butr is the kind of a project if you write they allow uh, you to use this uh, iron beam and uh, uh, you can of course carry out this kind of work using heavy ions uh, by using this because that is ugc facility and that is made for the university people and the college people as well uh, and apart from that the gamma source is uh, with us and uh, the electron sources also uh, uh, with us in the department of physics at the bay philippine university and i am looking after all these kinds of uh, the facility uh, but uh, now uh, the synthesis part is quite over uh, we have extended this particular uh, research field uh, further uh, to the synthesis uh, more than the synthesis uh, at the time of uh, we we can uh, synthesize diffuse and make device in the material kind of a polymer or the glass material at a time this is the one step method which can be done only with the help of radiation kind of uh, uh, radiation like the electron you just have to put electron so the synthesis will uh, the nano particle will form it will transfer momentum to the nano particle and deposit uh, diffuse into the material that we have introduced like polymer or the glass material or any kind of material and that nano particle which will be introduced and then that nano particle which has been introduced in the material will alter all kinds of the transport properties in case of semiconductor or the if if uh, your material is glass material or the polymer then there uh, the all uh, the properties can be tailored with the help of this this is called the one step method and recently we have developed this kind of one step method where the synthesis of the nanoparticle at the same time diffusion can also be taken place otherwise in some other case you have to synthesize initially uh, in the first step then you synthesize material can be put it into the diffusion uh method and then you can do it the diffusion process and the third step is then you can characterize your uh, the sample so the i think uh, and the, the, the third generation of this kind of irradiation material or the irradiation process is that we are trying to develop a, a device directly in a one step method so uh, uh, the structure that you have seen uh, the indium oxide and sio2 and silicon where you are forming a track of uh, the ion beam and the track of ion beam can be uh, you know developed as a device in that particular uh, the uh, base material like silicon or the polymer or the glass material and this is what we have done uh, and uh, i just wanted to share within one minute and then i will stop uh, we have actually introduced uh, the Uh, the glass material and we have developed a glass detector for neutron detection uh, it is very difficult to uh, measure a neutron uh, or it is very difficult to measure a neutron dose and there are many dosimeters which are available but uh, having different range because uh, the, if the neutron is having energy is 0.25 to you will have to use different if it is a one electron hole if you have to, you will uh, have to use different one if it is 1 mm you have to different ways but what we have developed we have developed a method from where you can measure a track why track because the we have taken a simple glass material exposed with the neutron 14 mm neutron and because of the 14 mm neutron there is a fission which has been taken place because of the fission there is a fission fragment which is a very heavy and they deposited there in the we have observed a track and measuring the track itself with the size of the uh, the track is in nano and uh, depending on the size that we could calculate the uh, dose of the nano particle and uh, it is independent on the energy of the uh, neutron this is what we are going to publish uh, very soon so this we want to extend for the ion beam as well where you can use uh, only single beam of 
any kind of species, either it is uh, oxygen, either it is uh, uh, gold, either it is silver, either it is copper, either it is any kind of a beam, you can use and put it into the material where you will see the nano formation at the same time there is a formation of the device. So this is one step method where you can have synthesized, you can have diffusion and you can have formation of the, uh, the device itself. And then, then that, that device can be characterized for a, some application. Application in the sense of, uh, uh, you know, uh, maybe that you have to explore where that particular device can be used. Mm -hmm. So with this, uh, uh, you know, end remark uh, of this particular presentation, I thank once again for organizing, especially our all friends, uh, the principal Kilare, uh, Professor Rajapure, who is uh, here, and uh, uh, Professor uh, Bobde, Patak sir, Shinde madam, and all uh, those who are involved in conducting this kind of webinar. And it is very fantastic that we have organized. Thank you very much, and thank you all. If you have any question, please be, be feel free to ask me. So I'm ready to answer. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you for your nice presentation. And the session is open for discussion now. Bobde, sir. I request delegates. Yeah. Hello. 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 Sir. Ah, sir, there is one question. Huh. Yes. Sir, there is one question from presentation. The presentation is very nice and uh, yeah. Yes, sir. Bola na. Bola ki. And now, sanga sir, maladi. You will not tell. Yes, sir. Ha. Ah, a question is Doctor S B Ayer. Ha, ha. Ah, my question is which radiation method is considered as effective method? For a synthesis of metal nanoparticles, various uh, methods you elaborate. Yeah, with. yeah, but uh, I will uh, say that. Why? Uh, and electron uh, irradiation method is more useful. Okay. Uh, because it can synthesize not only metal but semiconductor material as well, and the diffusion can also be taken place, and the, for the okay. devices, uh, the material. And uh, why it is because it is a light particle and it can penetrate uh, through the medium. Uh, okay. As in case of iron, you require very high energy and oh, it can penetrate up to only 20 to 50 micrometer and uh, okay. where you can focus on this. But uh, if you take 6 mu electron, then even it can pass through the bottle and then you can you know, synthesize metal nanoparticle as well as diffusion can also be taken place. So effectively, the electron mm -hmm. method is one of the best method and uh, ever been uh, used by many people right now. And uh, they are, of course, uh, our paper, have, the paper uh, has been cited for uh, many researchers and they're using it very properly. But they say uh, gamma radiation method also is effective. Uh, the gamma radiation, see, uh, gamma radiation is, uh, uh, why not it is effective? Because it is radioactive uh, source and uh, you do not have control on the energy, isn't it? If it is uh. copa 60, if it is cobalt 60, uh -huh. then its energy is fixed. That is 1.17 and 1.33 MeV. So on an average, it is 1 MeV. And mm -hmm. uh, if you look at, at the cross section, then uh, the Compton electron will have a more cross section and its energy is 0.5 MeV. So okay. if you compare with the 6 MeV and a 0.5 MeV, the time required for the synthesis process and the division process will be very, very small. Okay. okay, so that uh, and uh, uh, the, uh, the maximum energy, uh, the uh, radioactive sources which are available is mm -hmm. not more than 5 MeV. And even if you take 5 MeV of gamma radiation, then the maximum energy that you will get 1 MeV of electron. And this is what mm -hmm. we have uh, done it, uh, the simulation and the calculation, which shows that the average content energy electron is 0.5 to 1 MeV and through which uh, it has uh, limitation. Of course, you can do it, uh, but uh, not as in case of uh, that we do in uh, the 6 electron reaction. 
Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much, sir, for yes, your sir. innovative and yeah. uh, very nice reply. Yeah. Uh, once again, I thank you very much. I would like to request other participants to ask. Hello, Rajpuri, sir. Hello. Hello, sir. Hello. Bula, sir. Ha, sir. Uh, there, there is one question in the chat sure. box. Hmm. Uh, Dr. S. B. Iyer has asked it. Uh, just an idea as we can, as we use capping agent to stabilize the nanoparticle right, 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 right. to avoid accumulation. Hmm. Can same idea be used to cap coronavirus so that they will become inactive? Sir, I was at the year. Shall I repeat the question? They have Rajapuri Sarnaika Manai. I applaud the sir. But a bird, but a bird, but a bird, but uh, we can prepare, that is not, that is fine. Sarani We can have a control on the size of the nanoparticle as you vary the uh, electron fluence. Barbar, But problem is, suppose if you optimize the optimization, when the optimization will come into the picture unless and until if you uh, actually this drug delivery and the coronavirus were uh, testing all kinds of uh, the uh, you know drugs which has already been prepared but their testing uh, actually human testing is yet to be done and uh, and it is to be done in three stages that is uh, essentially they have prepared a drug, this, this kind of a drug where the size of this drug can be controlled very nicely. But only uh, to optimization, kutla drug, kutla size, tya mansala, kiwa tya rugnala, mede coronavirus la marto, he pana sati, te apela, bereas lokan were testing kara lagna rahe, and in the temati optimization noon, and in the temati drug, the vaccination put a nara. That is uh, fine, Manjee. That's a local karta it, Manjee. Hmm? Thank you, thank you. Okay. Any other question from participants? Yes, sir. Huh. <coughs> there is one more question from chat box. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Bharti Fatil asked, what precautions we have to take while dealing with nanosynthesis by radiation? Huh. Uh, the beauty of this technique is uh, that you don't have to worry about any kind of, uh, uh, you know, uh, the condition which is to be kept in mind. Uh, you just have to prepare a solution and just expose with the radiation. That's fine. And control is only the fluence because you have to optimize that what uh, the fluence that you are getting a size of the required size of the nanoparticle. But uh, the beauty of this particular technique is that you don't require any kind of the additional precautions uh, which you require in other processes like physical method, vapor deposition process or diffusion process or even, even in case of the biological process where you need a uh, the annealing process or they, they need to be have need to have a temperature uh, and then you have to optimize accordingly. There are a lot of things which is to be done but where in this case you don't uh, need any kind of precaution. You just prepare your solution and if required, the capping agent or the stabilizer and then you expose with the radiation and they vary the fluence and then see the size of the nanoparticle. That's it. Thank you so much for your words of wisdom. It will be great for the research. You know, uh -huh. Now, it's my honor to request Honorable Professor Dr. K.Y. Rajpuri, sir, from 
department of physics shivaji university kolapur to deliver its talk for the second session over to rajpur sir ra jevna cha break getla asta tumhi hello sir dhonde sir ha sir 10 minute jevna cha break dila asta saglyanna चले सर नहीं का सर का हाँ राजपुर सर का बता एक दह पंद्रह मिनट जेवना ब्रेक दया नहीं बनते कंटिन्ू टू लेक्चर्स टू लेक्चर है नर मैं कंक्लूड करा तुम्हें बगा कस करता तुम्हें बगा अदरवाइज यू कैन कंटिन्ू राजपुरे बगा मैं राजपुरे सर हो खाउन आल दस मत बर बर ठीक है ठीक है सर राजपुरे सर मी मीटिंग जो बर का थैंक यू सर थैंक यू डोरे सर यस सर यस सर यस सर ओके थैंक यू वेरी मच नाइस कंडक्टिंग सर राजपुरे सर राजपुरे सर Now may I request Professor Rajpure from Shivaji University Kolapur to deliver his talk. Yes. Has the presentation share not been done? आवाज येतोय का सर तुम्हाला हा सर आवाज येतोय का तुम्हाला माझा अनम्यूट करा सर अनम्यूट हा राजपुरे सर अनम्यूट करा तुम्ही राजपुरे सर आहेत ना ऑनलाईन आहेत सर ऑनलाईन फक्त ते काय प्रॉब्लेम झाला विचारतो मी त्यांना हेलो सर
Hello. हाँ सर शाम को करने डियर पार्टिसिपेंट देर विल बी अ ब्रेक ऑफ टेन मिनिट्स आफ्टर टेन मिनिट्स वील बी बैक We'll start at two o'clock exactly. Okay, okay. We'll start at two. So please have a lunch break for ten minutes. पाठक सर राजपुरी सर हेल्प परमिटेड नो ओ सर हाँ ओके नो प्रॉब्लम
चेंज करने से ये करता है वीडियो चालू करता है पासवर्ड बदले मे हाँ जे जे आर यू हियरिंग मी या आई कैन हियर यू ओके ओके नो प्रॉब्लम यू यू कैन शेयर इट बट वेट फॉर टू मिनिट्स ओके 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 स्टॉप शेयरिंग ओके सो ऑल डियर पार्टिसिपेंट uh we'll start the session of dr jo ajire uh, due to some technical issue of dr k y rajpure uh, earlier we'll take a session of dr jire sir and after after that we will have a session of dr k y rajpure sir so i'll request to dr jire sir please start your session can you hear me yes first of all i would like to give thanks to uh, organizing committee uh, of balwan college for your invitation in this one day seminar program uh, <clears throat> and respected the principal and the head of the department of department of physics and uh, and other other members <clears throat> so we are and also we are listening a nice beautiful talk from professor dole uh, <clears throat> so now i am going to give a presentation i'm going to give uh, i'm working on electronics and optoelectronics application it is mainly based on the flexible uh, but today out of that uh, Uh, among my work i will be giving a presentation uh, which is on resistive switching memory based on organic materials the organic materials i am using p.pss that is conducting polymers so what is resistive switching and how memory is formed we will be discuss uh, <clears throat> later and i am interested on flexible devices my present current my present uh, research work is based on the flexible substrates flexible memory <clears throat> so yeah the flexible electronics why flexible electronic is important uh, in day to day life nowadays the flexible uh, electronic is important because it could reduces the size and the weight of the device and also increases the circuitry density and uh, eliminates bulky connections not only that the device can be bent and folded during its use that is why it could be used for the military purposes and uh, and even other day to day a uh, life purpose it's, it's make it more convenient to use it here we can see the e roll uses of rollable flexible here we can see and the next picture the next picture we could see the flexible this is blue organic light emitting diodes and here these are the literature review oh, we could see here the flexible electronics Jong et al demonstrate non volatile resistive switching memory which is based on the graphene oxide it was deposited on the pet substrates the flexible pet substrates and the on and off current ratio is 10 to the power 2 at low voltage 
plus or minus 2.5 voltage. And here we can see another uh, Sun et al. also demonstrate non-volatile memory device. And he used, they use uh, gene oxide materials. They also fabricate uh, on the flexible bed substrates. And this, this device shows non-noticeable degradation after 200 switching devices. So in my present research work, I'm working on the uh, flexible bed substrates uh, <clears throat> using organics material that is uh, P.PSS. We can see here the same micrograph. Here uh, in the first figure of the left-hand side, this left-hand side, this is the same image, same micrograph, same image of beer that is Pristine, that is beer, ITO on pet substrates. But this, this one, we can see the surface is quite uneven and ununiform. That is why it is not much suitable to use for, a, uh, for a memory devices. Therefore, on top of that, here we can see on the right hand side, here on the right hand side of this figure, on top of the ITO, Indian tin oxide. I we did a spin coating using spin coating deposit this P dot PSS. The P dot PSS was deposited on top of the on the top surface of the ITO. And the substrate is used pet flexible pet substrates. Here, <clears throat> the surface topography is much flatter and small texture, and therefore it could be used for multifunctional non-volatile memory devices. It is suitable for memory devices. Here on the last figure, we could see the cross-sectional view of the cross-sectional view of the fabricated the device. Aluminum, aluminum is the top, the top electrodes, and P.PS is the conducting polymers. This is P-type polymers. And bottom, bottom electrode is ITO. And here the thickness, the thickness of this top electrode aluminum is 64 nanometer. And the material P.PSS is 250 nanometer. And the bottom electrode is 53 nanometers. <clears throat> we will discuss the fabrication, how it fabricates uh, this memory device on the next slide. <clears throat> here, we could see here the device structures. The schematic diagram of the flexible memory device, we could see these P.PSS were spin coated on ITO, that is bottom electrode ITO. This ITO, ketan ITO is made on top of the Pet, flexible pet substrate. This is polymer pet substrate. It could be folded, it could be banded during its uses. So <clears throat> this ITO, on top of this ITO pattern, uh, PSS conducting polymers, PSS is uh, deposited using spin coating. And on top of this PSS, the top electrode that is aluminum electrode is fabricated using thermal vacuum evaporation for electrical contact. Here we can see the figure of this photograph of the fabricated the device of this, uh, fabricated the device of, of this fabricated device. Here, uh, <clears throat> this is the electrical These electrical switching properties. <clears throat> this device, the device is, uh, I will just go back to this one. For electrical contact, we're made from bottom ITO, this bottom ITO and the top aluminum electrode. So IV current voltage characteristic is measured. Uh, so we could. I got, we got here the IV characterization. This is, yeah, we could see. 
Now we will be explain this one, how switching is formed, how the memory is formed. This external electrical stimulation was applied in the form of an applied voltage in the sequence of zero to zero to plus four volt. And then it switched back to plus four volt to zero volt. And then after that, it switched to negative. And after that, the negative voltage was applied. And then it applied from zero volt to minus four volt. And after that, minus four volt to it switched back to zero volt again. This is how the switching is formed. And this for set process, when the positive voltage is applied on top of the electrodes, that is aluminum, the positive voltage is applied on the top electrode aluminum, then we could see the switching start from its the current, the current density is increasing. And we can see here at plus five volts, it's rapidly, abruptly increase. Abruptly increase, that means this part, uh, zero volt to, zero volt to plus three, five volt, that is high resistance test. The resistance of the substrate, the resistance of the material is very high. So when, when it reads, when the voltage reads to, plus 3.5 volts, then the, then the resistance changes, the resistance changes into high resistance states. This is called set process. Why the resistance is changes? The material, firstly, the material is in a high resistance states. High resistance state, that means it is an insulator. It behaves as insulator. But when the external electric field is applied on the insulator, then those insulators, due to the presence of the electric field, it gets polarization is taking place. Due to the polarization, then, then the, the, and the movement of the dipole moment, then the current is rapidly increasing, abruptly increasing to high resi low resistance state. That is called high conducting state. That, that's what we call on states. Then it switches to off state to on state. This process is called set process. And this low resistance state is maintained from plus four volt to minus four volt while reverse sweeping. And this low resistance state switches to a high resistance state to a low at a voltage of minus three, minus 3.6 volts in the reverse bias. So this is how the switching high off state, that is high resistance state HRS, switches to low resistance state, that is high conducting states. We will discuss the mechanisms. And this is the conduction mechanisms. We could see here, the schematic diagram of the resistive switching mechanisms. So the, when the positive voltage, external positive voltage was applied on top of the aluminum, this is the top electrodes. Then oxidize, oxidation was taken place on this P dot. And then when oxidization was taken place, then, uh, then the hole was extracted. The hole was extracted due to releasing of electrons. And these holes was extracted from P dot and it's become P dot ions. Then this P dot ion is, it's transferred, trans, transferred from the top aluminum electrode to the bottom I, ITO. This is how the conductive part is formed. This is called filament formation. Due to this, we can just go back. This is the reason why we can see in this figure, this is the reason why high resistance state is switches to off on, on states, that is low resistance state. This is called set process. 
here and then yogesh join jale bak in the reverse process when the negative voltage is applied on the top of the aluminum then uh then rupture the conductive part it rupture the conductive parts and then that is called the break of the filament that is what we call reset process and uh, st the the stability of the device is test for for on state and off state during the on state and off state the memory the memo memory device so stability of on current in both on state and off state at one voltage for the duration is 2 2 to 10 to the power 3 second and here we can see in this figure uh, in this graph the retention reveal good behavior without noticeable deteriorations of the device interestingly the interesting part interestingly we could see the flexibility tabi flexibility test in this flexibility test the same device during measurement uh, <clears throat> the device was bending and folding at an angle of 70 90 and 160 degree so we could see no detect no detects able changes in the resistive switching even after bending the memory device at an angle 70 degree 90 degree and 160 degree making this compatible the flexible electronics this study demonstrate the device has a sufficient potential to be used in as a non volatile resistive switching memory device in various electronics applications and here this is the fabricated uh, uh, device the photograph of the fabricated device and the conclusions mainly this uh, organic material p.pss i we use p.pss and this using p.pss this uh, switching behavior is formed due to forming of the filaments and the rupturing of the filaments and the oxidation part the oxidation and reduction of p.pss is considered to be probable mechanisms to explain the forming and rupture of the conductive parts of this fabricated device so this fabricated device demonstrate and provides a class of memory device with a potentials for future flexible electronics applications so thank you okay ah uh, jire sir uh, so any question ah uh, yes sir participants hello participant if you have any question then you can ask yeah if you have any question you can ask me about the fabrication and even for the light switching mechanisms okay there is one question in chat box from okay. dr ayer sir okay uh, what is the switching speed of what is this what is this yes what is the sw switching speed of this memory device a switching speed is uh, uh <clears throat> during measurement i i i use the switching speed sometimes it is varies but in this particular uh, in this particular results i use uh, 0.0 uh, 0 second 01 second so 0.01 second so <clears throat> but this switching speed can be it can be varies even even if we change the switching speed uh, 
uh, result, the outcome is not much different. So the switching speed doesn't much uh, affect the result, the outcome of the switching memory. Hello, sir. So any other more question? Yes, yes, there is one, one more question. Hello. Okay, okay, sir. Ah. So, so there is one more question from Gauri Vaidya. What can be used other than organic polymer for resistive memory device? Okay, okay, that's a nice question. Here in this paper, I use this organic, uh, uh, organic, organic materials like this P dot PSA part. Uh, we can use a semiconductor like zinc oxide, TiO2, and metal oxides. So even metal oxides can be used. Then organics material like these polymers also could be used. And not only that, hybrids, the combinations of inorganics and organic material also can be used. So if we if we add it, like for an example, I use this one. P dot PSS. This is the pristine uh, P dot PSS. This is organic material. But if I put it the agent like another material, let's say for the gold particles or some metal, then the switching memory can be increased. So that means the on state and this on state, the current ratio of off state and on state and off state could be increased. So, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, am I answer the question? Yes, yes sir. So any other more question? Participants, please uh, ask if you have any question. So if, yeah, you can ask me if you have any question, how it fabricate for fabrication part, if you want me to explain again, I can, I'm ready to explain how I fabricate this one. This, uh, this one, this, I use PET substrates, but not only this PET flexible PET substrate, we can use light photo paper also. At this, currently I'm, I'm working on the photo paper. This photo paper can be folded and bended. And uh, not only this photo paper, any various flexible substrate also could be used. So, and if you are willing to use for light uh, metal oxide, like zinc oxide could also be used. Zinc oxide and gold particles, that composites with PVA, polymers. I did it for another paper. So then that, that is what uh, Professor Dolesar explained, the synthesis of metal oxide. That, that synthesis also can be used in this case. Uh, I don't saw the synthesis part because Peter PS is, is directly used, which I pur we purchase from the market. But if you are willing to work in Xenoxide, let's say, or some people use perovskites, perovskite also could be used. So we could put, we could get a very good switching memory uh, using a perovskite also materials and Xenoxide also TIO TIO2 also. So in this inoxide, we can I use uh, like uh, chemical synthesis method, like hydrothermal chemical bath deposition technique or uh, sol gel method. We can use chemical technique for synthesis part. Not only for the chemical synthesis, we can use for physical synthesis part also. For using ion beams and another also, it could be used for the synthesis part. It depends on the availability of India research land. Any other question? Congress, sir. Please express what of Thank you, sir. It was really amazing speech. Thank you, sir, for sharing your knowledge with us. Thank you very much for giving us idea about the electrical switching and the application in electrical field. Thank you so, so much, sir. It is very useful for the society. Now, 
thank you so much. I would like to give thanks finally, yeah, uh, but not the least uh, to the organizing uh, members and all the participants for listening my lecture, especially. Thank you, all of you, and may God bless you all. Thank you, sir. Thank, thank you very much. Patek, sir. Patek, sir. Ah, sir, bola ki. Ah, me Rajpuri Sarana request kar to bolo to na. Okay. Start karu ka. Kara. Okay. Uh, now for the third session, uh, may I request uh, Professor Dr. Rajpuri sir of Shivaji University Kolhapur for his uh, talk on metal oxide semiconductors for catalysis. I have already introduced Professor Raj Puresar from uh, in the morning session, but uh, due to connectivity problems, uh, we all have some certain uh, audio issues. Therefore, I will I would like to reintroduce him. In a, I would like to reintroduce him with his short bio data now. Uh, Professor Raj Puresar is a student of Raj Shikshan Samstha. He is a very young and talented researcher of Shivaji University, Kolhapur. And his research biodata is very strong. I, will, I would like to read his research biodata once again. Uh, Professor Rajpuri sir has published 211 research articles uh, in reputed international journals and acquired 7,310 citations. H index of his publications is 51 and ITIN index is 157. He has successfully guided 14 PhD students and two MPhil students so far and 59 students are pursuing MSc under his guidance. Currently, six MSc students and five PhD scholars are working under him. He has participated and given invited talks in more than 50 national and international conferences and seminars organized by Department of Physics in Shivaji University, Kolhapur, and colleges affiliated to this. He has successfully completed five research projects worth rupees 86 lakhs, which were funded by various funding agencies of central government. He was instrumental in establishing establishing various facilities such as PIFC, that is Physics Instrumentation Facility Center in Shivaji University, Kolhapur. Currently, he is the head department of University Science and Instrumentation Center and Common Facility Center, CFC of Shivaji University, Kolhapur. He is a member of board of studies of various universities such as Karnataka University, Dharwad. He is also a member of uh, board of studies of TC College, Baramati, Vivekanand College, Kolhapur, DKT College, Ichalkarnji, JSPMS, Rajarshi Chau College of Engineering, Thathode Pune, and KBP College, Pandarpur. He is working as a PhD referee for various universities. He is a life member of Marathi Vidyan Parishad, as he already told us. He, is, he has got membership of Material Research Society of India, MRSI, Semiconductor Society of India, SSI, Indian Physics Association, IPA, and Indian Association of Physics Teachers. Also, he is working on editorial board of various research journals. Uh, he was very kind enough to accept our invitation as chief guest and resource person uh, in today's seminar. So with this brief introduction of Professor K. Y. Rajpure, may I request him to present his session. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Shall I start my presentation? Yeah, yeah, it's okay, sir. No. Uh, thank you very much, respected uh, Professor Bobade, sir. Uh, 
as i have explained in the morning session i will be talking on the use of metal oxide semiconductors for catalysis <coughs> i am working as a professor in the university department of physics at shivaji university kolapur i am working as a head of the department acting head of the department of university science instrumentation center uc and common facility center that is cfc of shivaji university kolapur in addition to this university authorities have interested me the responsibility of sophisticated analytical instrumentation facility saip uh, so i am coordinator of saip center as well metal oxide semiconductors for catalysis so my talk is related to material science and i will be uh, explaining the use of metal oxide semiconductor materials for the catalysis before beginning my talk let me explain the various fields in which i am working since beginning so i am working both on thin film and bulk materials uh, thin films they are chalcogenide thin films uh, metal oxide thin films and these are used in various applications as uh, wet solar cell that is photo electrochemical solar cell then transparent conducting oxide in sensors in catalysis and bulk materials particularly magnetic materials ferrite material semi composites and metal oxide materials these are used in the composite semi composite applications uh, sensors and catalysis my talk will be centered around the use of metal oxide semiconductor thin films so before proceeding let me explain what the thin film is though it is a very well known uh, concept let me once again uh, visualize <coughs> you all where we stand so thickness of sheet of a plate it is around 1 mm and it is a acrylic board brass board is the best example of this plate the thickness of a gold or aluminum foil it is around 1 micrometer to 10 micrometer and anything or any material whose thickness third dimension is restricted Uh, to one micrometer, or if the thickness of the material, if it is less than one micrometer, then it is called as the thin film. So we can define the thin film as a material which is extended in two dimensions but restricted in the third dimension. The research fields in which I am working, they are. solar cells transparent conducting oxides then photocatalysis gas sensors and ultraviolet detectors and then one of there is one more field in which i am working these are these are called as memory registers or memory stars as these are transparent conducting oxides before proceeding further let me explain what the transparent conducting oxides means or tcu means any material which is transparent to visible light and which is conducting is called as transparent conducting oxide and these transparent conductors they are neither 100% optically transparent nor metallically conducting the best example of excellent conductor is the copper and the best example of the insulator is the nacl which is transparent but it is insulated so basic electromagnetic theory does not permit us that the material should be both conducting as well as transparent due to this this is the formula for the plasma frequency for the material and m is the effective electron mass n is the carrier density 
and other r will not constant so depending on value of m and n the material will decide whether to allow other radiation to pass through it or not so this transparent also is the relative concept so transparent to what transparent to visible light or transparent to uv light or transparent to ir radiation or any other so here i am concerned with the materials which are transparent to visible light and which are electrically conducting this photograph shows the thin film materials which are prepared in our laboratory as you can see the this is cadmium oxide whose conductivity is high and is transparent c is less so as you go from left to right the conductivity decreases and transparency increases so this is the uh, representative photograph of the representative materials which we have investigated in the thin film form in our laboratory basically these are oxide semiconductor this gives you the <clears throat> comparison uh, or the representation of the formula sigma is equal to n e mu sigma is the conductivity n is the electrical uh, carrier density e is the charge and mu is the mobility so on x axis electron mobility is plotted on the y axis electron density is plotted and these colored lines red green blue blue and man data all these are the lines drawn at one particular conductivity value so as you can see at fixed conductivity as you increase mobility carrier density decreases and vice versa so i have drawn uh, one square here and ellipse here so semi metals bismuth lead etc etc they have got less mobility but high carrier density therefore they are highly conductive metals also they have got high mobility high conductivity and high uh, electrical conductivity as well but we are looking for the material whose mobility also is more and whose carrier density also is more and these are the oxide materials so if you dope oxide materials with proper dopant then it is possible to tune m star or n and thereby the uh, effective electron mass and therefore we choose a material having appropriate value of n and m so that oxides also can be converted to the conductors so transparent conductors they have large number of applications in diverse field of science and technology and some of the uh, applications i have listed here uv light emitting diodes transparent screens de fosters flat panel displays touch panel touch display panels solar cells and photocatalysis so this is the application which i am going to explain in my today's talk photocatalysis so what what do you mean by catalysis catalysis is the acceleration of rate of chemical reaction by an catalyst so if reaction rate is accelerated by a catalyst without taking part into actual reaction then it is called as catalysis and if this catalysis happens with the help of a photons then it is called as photocatalysis now is it possible to use the idea of or this uh, photocatalysis for removing impurities in the drinking water and this aspect is very important because our traditional filtration methods as water chlorination sedimentation slow sand filter and etc etc they are not useful in removing the organic impurities or the biological impurities which are present in the Uh, polluted water therefore 
this photocatalysis seems to be a low cost technique where the semiconducting oxide electrolyte system is used with the help of the photons and this is called as photocatalysis and the very important thing of this photocatalysis is that we have harmless byproducts so what are various wastewater treatments which are there uh, which are in the day to day use we can broadly classify these treatments into physical biological and chemical techniques in the physical techniques screening sedimentation flotation filtration stripping is there biological aerobic anaerobic treatments are there chemical treatment also there are there coagulation chlorination adsorption ozonation etc etc in addition to this one more chemical uh, wastewater treatment is there it is called as advanced oxidation process where the phenomena of oxidation and reduction takes place simultaneously and it is possible to degrade L any organic compound therefore physical and biological methods are not useful for removing the chemical impurities in the water so what are again methods of advanced oxidation process these are basically homogeneous process and heterogeneous process homo means same and hetero so so far as the same medium is concerned then these are the homogeneous process all these are the homogeneous process where ozonation uh, fenton reaction anodic oxidation and all other methods are uh, listed but heterogeneous method it is the photocatalysis is the heterogeneous method where two media water and solid or liquid and solid media the attack part so what are major advantages of the photocatalysis the way in which this photocatalysis uses us or helps us in removing the unwanted impurities in the water they are so it offers good replacement for the energy initiative treatment method harmless by product is the greatest advantage of this uh, photocatalysis method this can be used in destruction of variety of hazardous compounds any organic impurity and the mild mild reaction condition modest reaction time and lesser chemical input uh, is the another advantage of the method minimal secondary waste generation is the advantages and this can be applied for hydrogen generation also if we apply bias between anode and cathode in the photoelectrophoresis chain then it is possible to create the hydrogen in the laboratory when we think of using the photocatalysis and the photocatalyst we have various options we can use metal we can use semiconductor we can use the insulator as the photocatalyst but the, probability of using metal as a photocatalyst hmm, we cannot use it because with the help of metals either reduction or oxidation process can happen therefore the simultaneous occurrence of oxidation and reduction reaction is not possible with the help of metals therefore we cannot use metals metal catalyst for the photocatalysis for due to high energy requirements as in case of insulators the band gap of the insulator is very very high so you need to use a uv radiation in the photocatalyst therefore this possibility also uh, is useless but if we think of using semiconductor as the photocatalyst then there is a chance because position of conduction band edge and valence band edge of most of the semiconductor lie in a such a way that then the valence band edge is below oxidation potential of the water and conduction band edge is above the reduction potential of the water therefore we can use semiconductor for the photocatalysis so how how it takes place for example if you consider a semiconductor particle maybe semiconductor nanoparticle in the vicinity of the polluted water or the organic impurity water so this polluted water may contain 
oxidized and reduced species. When we illuminate a semiconductor with the help of a light whose energy is equal to or greater than the band gap energy of the semiconductor, then the photon is absorbed in the semiconductor and the valence band uh, electron, it absorbs the photon, it gets the conduction band and valence band has hole and conduction band has the electron. So electron and hole pair is generated. And this hole is responsible for the oxidation process and electron is responsible for the reduction process. If the electron and hole pair, they are effectively utilized. But if they are not effectively utilized, then they recombine and they produce heat and which this recombination process, it decreases the efficiency of the catalysis. So, photocatalysis is the process involving absorption of a photon and production of electron and hole and then the production of hydroxy radical or reactive oxygen species and most of the electron and hole recombine thereby limit the efficiency of the photocatalysis. Which are various semiconductors that can be used as the photocatalyst. Here I have displayed The band position of several semiconductors in contact with the aqueous electrolyte at pH is equal to 1. So as I mentioned, for using semiconductor, I, a semiconductor in photocatalysis, its valence band A should be less than or below the oxidation potential and conduction band A should be above the reduction potential. This is the uh, thumb rule. But here you can see the materials like gallium arsenide, gallium phosphide, cadmium sulfide, cadmium selenide, iron oxide, tungsten trioxide, tin oxide, they are not suitable for water splitting due to bond bank positions. And CDS and CDEC, they are unstable. So the materials which we can use, they are titanium oxide, silicon carbide, and strontium titanium. And other oxides, if we uh, tailor their band edges. So TiO2 is well studied photocatalyst. It is highly chemically stable and its catalytic efficiency is very, very high. But use of TiO2 is uneconomical because it is costly. Therefore, we cannot use the TiO2 uh, in the uh, photocatalysis experiment due to its cost. So zinc oxide is supposed to be a suitable alternate to the TiO2 because it absorbs a large fraction of the solar spectrum and the degradation mechanism in the zinc oxide is very similar to that of TiO2. Therefore, we prepared initially uh, TiO2 nanoparticles and used them in the photocatalysis experiment. So how to use this? So TiO2 nanoparticles are taken and these nanoparticles, they are dispersed in the polluted water and this polluted water is continuously stirred and it is kept in the light source or you can keep, keep it in the sunlight. So what do you see with respect to time, the extinction, this is the optical absorption taken in, on the spectroscopic experiment with respect to time. So at the regular interval sample is taken out and it is the spectrum is measured. It is seen that with respect to time, intensity of this peak is decreasing. Therefore, this TiO2 is it acts as a photocatalyst. This is the idea. Now, zinc oxide, as I said, it is abundantly available, it is not costly, it is not toxic, highly thermally and chemically stable, and we can uh, Taylor, its electrical resistivity, they are highly transparent and they have other properties. Therefore, these are uh, the suitable alternate to the TiO2 for the photocatalysis. Therefore, we prepared uh, zinc oxide polycrystalline powder and zinc oxide nanocrystalline powder. Nano means the particle size is less than 100. So, he, in this case, the particle size in case of the precipitated powder it was a 50 nanometer, 50. 
and the particle size of the zinc oxide uh, powder prepared with the help of uh, combustion method it was 1515 nanometer so it is seen that the uh, degradation of rhodamine b rhodamine b is one of the organic compound chemical compound hmm, whose color is orange and with respect to time when you uh, disperse this zinc oxide powder it may be polycrystalline powder or it may be nanocrystalline powder put it in the solution of rhodamine b and if you eliminate it this solution and continuously stir this solution we see that with respect to time the color of the rhodamine b it gets um, paint and the rhodamine b gets degraded completely maybe after 250 40 minute or so so it is seen that the size of the particle also is very important if it is nano uh, size then surface to volume ratio increases and therefore the more reaction site or more uh, reaction areas you can say it is available for the uh, reaction to happen and therefore it is advisable to prepare the material in the nano form to use in the photocatalysis after that oh mahesh me meeting kuni he password parat kuni he kela pan marathi chi meeting schedule keli hoti sir koni tari mule ap kelo ta ta oi चेक कर ना ना when a zinc oxide nanoparticle if it is illuminated by the appropriate radiation then electron and hole pair is generated the electron is used to or electron generates the highly reactive uh, species that is just 2 oh dot h o2 dot and hole uh, generates the reactive uh, other Uh, reactive uh, species like OH dot adsorb, that OH dot etc. So what we see when any organic compound having general formula C N M O M H two N minus two M plus two, it it comes in the contact of these highly reactive uh, species, oxygen species, then. CO2 and H2 are formed. So these are harmless or uh, less harmful. Less harmful uh, by by perhaps are formed. So this is called as a mobile catalysis, where the photocatalyst it moves in the solution and it is illuminated by the radiation. So it is in motion. so what are disadvantage of this mobile catalysis so it is possible that during the reaction the catalyst get modified irreversible reaction occurs with the by product and very difficult thing is after purification of water it is very difficult to take out the catalyst so separation methods they are levers and therefore the another strategy called as photo electrocatalysis so mobile catalysis is replaced by immobile catalysis where the photocatalyst is not moving in the polluted water but it is deposited on the substrate in the thin film form and this photo, uh, immobile catalyst uh, there is a provision for application of a bias to uh, through external circuit so it is possible to enhance the photocatalysis by applying a potential where there is a effective charge separation and there is a increase in efficiency of the oxidation and reduction reaction at the semiconductor electrolyte interface so the immobile catalysis or photo electrocatalysis 
is the thing which I'm going to explain. So this is the famous concept of a photoelectrochemical cell or wet cell, where which has three components, photoanode, counter electrode, and the electrolyte. So counter electrode may be uh, any metal which is not, uh, which doesn't take part in the chemical reaction. Photoanode would be semiconductor oxide uh, photocatalyst or a thin thin film form and electrolyte would be depolluted water. And therefore, when we illuminate a junction between semiconductor and electrolyte, the electron and pole pair is generated here also. So very similar to thing which happened here in case of a nanoparticle in thin film also electron and hole pair is generated and due to application of a bias electron is attracted or it travels to external circuit and enters in the uh, electrolyte via other electrode and therefore effective oxidation and reduction reaction takes place and this is the energy band diagram of the PC cell based on n type semiconductor and a metal counter electrode and here polluted water is the electrolyte. So far as the preparation of this electrode material is concerned, there are various there are various methods there are various methods of preparation of uh, catalyst and these are the chemical methods particularly chemical bath, spin coating, dip coating, Dr. Blade method, metering rod, plot casting, spray coating, screen printing, inject printing, and aeroset gel. So of these, uh, we effectively prefer to use the spray coating technique, where uh, interface between solution and gas is used to form very fine droplets. And these fine droplets, they are sprayed over the hot separate, resulting into pyrolytic reaction and the thin film. Of us. So we have used uh, for preparation of most of the uh, photoelectrodes the spray paralysis technique uh, for the deposition of the film. So these are the components of the spray paralysis technique. We need a compressor, then we need a mechanical system to uh, uh, simple harmonic for offering simple harmonic motion of the nozzle over the substrate then heating arrangement, temperature measurement and controlling arrangement, and the chemical. Uh, so the heart of this unit is the nozzle. Due to application of a air or compressed air, when it hmm, comes from the outer hole at the tip of the nozzle, uh, vacuum is created. And due to this, the whole air column in the tube is sucked. And the solution is spread in the form of droplets on the hot substrate. Paralytic decomposition occurs and a very uniform, highly uniform and very adherent, high quality crystalline thin films are present. So the temperature of fabrication also is very important. You cannot deposit the film at every temperature. It should be optimum. So this, this temperature should be optimum such that the energy required for decomposition and paralytic decomposition and subsequent crystallization of the material is suitable. So it should neither be higher side or it should not be on the lower side. So here I have schematically represented the various stages through which the aerosol they reaches towards the hot substrate while forming the deposits on the substrate. These are the results on zinc oxide. You can see that zinc oxide is C axis oriented, highly crystalline zinc oxide, C axis oriented. It is highly transparent in the visible range. You can see the transparency is around 80 to 90%. And this, uh, this transparency is due to formation of a nano and and uh, the conductivity also is very, very high. The high conductivity of the use oxide, if this zinc oxide is in perfectly stoichiometric form, then it is in the insulating, uh, it is insulated. But if it is non-stoichiometric, there are 
deficiency, then it becomes conduct. So we discovered what, what is the cause of the conductivity. It is found that the oxygen uh, defect levels and zinc vacancies, they are responsible for the high conductivity of the zinc oxide. This is the photograph of the fluorine dopletine oxide conducting glass of size 10 centimeter by 10 centimeter on which in this configuration glass FTO and zinc oxide this is FTO and this is zinc oxide it is the first because we wish to use this zinc oxide electrode in the prototype reactor which I am going to show you here. So this is the prototype uh, reactor which has anode and cathode. Hmm. The photocatalyst is a cathode. Counter electrode stainless steel jacket acts as a counter electrode. Then this photocatalyst is deposited on the transparent conducting oxide and this electrode is deposited on the transparent glass so that this backside illumination is possible. You see, this backside illumination is important for generation of electron and hole and transportation of electron via external circuit. And there is a provision for giving the bias uh, between anode and cathode. So this is our cell and bias is given through potentiostat and through inlet polluted water enters and through outlet relatively pure water it comes out. So if we continuously circulate this uh, water uh, for maybe uh, one hour or two hours, then it is possible to completely degrade the organic impurity which is present in the water. So this is the uh, plot diagram of the par parallel fluid flow through PEC cells, which is used in the backside illumination in the recircular bench mode. So this is one cell. We can connect the output of first cell can be given to the given as input to the other cell, and you can connect the cells in the series. So this is three cell arrangement. This is nine cell arrangement. You can make uh, any arrangement. Uh, preparing uh, making arrangement of many cells is not so difficult. The difficulty is to fabricate the photo electrodes having size on the size 10 centimeter by 10 centimeter are having high catalytic efficiency. So this is back view of the reactor. Hmm, there is a provision for giving the electrical bias and the flow of the water because from one end water enters polluted water and from other end it goes up. But it should cover whole uh, surface area of the electrode. Therefore, a special path, zigzag flow path uh, for the flow of water is created. If there is a facility of illuminating this cell by UV radiation or visible radiation and you can keep this cell in sunlight as well. And this is 9 cell reactor, 9 cell configuration in series. And this configuration is done with the help of our collaborator, Professor Michael Newman. Uh, Spellard, who, is, who was a scientist earlier in the France, now he is in Czech Republic. Since 1999, uh, under the guidance of Professor C. H. Bosley and under the supervision of Professor Michael Newman Spellard, we are working in this field. So here, this is a PC uh, reactor and animation uh, is there. So, electrode it has given a bias, it is illuminated with the UV light and polluted water enters and out the outlet relatively pure water comes out. And if it is continuously circulated for three to four hours, then it is possible to get potable water out of impure water. These are the results on the extinction spectra of the degraded water sample. So one uh, dummy um, pollutant was taken as a salicylic acid and it was dissolved in water and this water was circulated through the reactor and at the continuous intervals the samples were taken from the relatively pure water 
and these spectra extinction spectra of that sample those samples it was taken and it is seen that with respect to time with respect to time the intensity of these peaks a b and c these are the peaks in the visible uh, these two uh, this is this peak is invisible this is in uv it continuously decreases and this is the signature of uh, degradation of the organic compound with respect to time if you plot the extinction uh, coefficient uh, relative logarithm of the relative extinction coefficient with respect to uh, time it is seen that it continuously decreases and the reaction constant k mm, if it is high the degradation rate is fast and if it is low the degradation rate is low chemical oxygen demand is the amount of organic compound in water required to completely oxidize the organic compound so if cod of a, if a given solution if it is high then more amount of chemical organic chemical is present in the water if it is low then the amount of chemical in the water has decreased so with respect to time it is seen that the cod chemical oxygen demand or the amount of organic compound in the water it continuously decreases and after 6 hour the cod of a water is 6 mg per liter and cod of a potable water is 6 hour so it is possible to make potable water out of non potable water with the help of the degradation reactor based on semiconductor oxide uh, metal oxide semiconductor photocatalyst and there are various parameters which affects the uh, photocatalysis initial solute concentration for example if it is very very high then it will take more time if it is low then it will take less time light intensity it should be optimum it should not neither uh, high or it should not low the ph of the solution it should be optimum it should be around 7 okay if it is not then you should uh, have the serious uh, dilution the material of the photocatalyst if it is tio2 or zinc oxide or it is doped zinc oxide or it is a composite so it or it is iron oxide or something else or it is a uh, ternary compound temperature also is very important the temperature should be optimal the way in which the photocatalytic activity can be improved is we can make a composite system for example tio2 has a band gap of uh, around 2.6 electron volt around 3 electron volt you can say so for illumination of tio2 or for using tio2 as a catalyst you need uv light and for example you have tungsten trioxide or other compound whose band gap lie in vc so you need the visible light for uh, degradation so if you make a composite between this uh, two materials then it is possible to harness whole solar spectrum for catalysis we can dope a metal uh, you can dope uh, metal oxide semiconductor for tuning the band positions of the material non metal doping also has been found to be effective for uh, increasing the catalytic efficiency dye sensitization c acid red f4 epoxy all these can be used as a sensitizers in the catalytic experiment so as i said this is the polar solar radiation spectrum what we can see we can see that the band gap of zinc oxide or tio2 it lie in uv region and band gap of the material wo3 or iron oxide it lie in visible so if you want to harness whole spectrum uv and visible you need zinc oxide as well as tio2 present in your catalyst so the best way is to make the composite between these two so if you if we make the composite between tio2 and iron oxide for example then the band gap of iron oxide is in visible band gap of tio2 is in uv the band positions are such that these this conduction bandage of tio2 higher than the conduction bandage of iron oxide and valence bandage of tio2 should be lower than the valence band of iron oxide so if when we this is before contact and this is energy diagram after contact so due to uh, due to charge transfer band bending takes place and built in potential occurs and uv is absorbed in tio2 and visible is absorbed in iron oxide so in this way both the semiconductor takes part 
in the photocatalysis reaction. So this is one way to improve the photocatalytic process. We have circulated the textile effluent out outlet, um, the chemical which is coming out of the chemical factory. Hmm. It was passed through the prototype reactor of uh, having uh, catalyst zinc oxide, and it is seen that it is possible to remove all the chemical impurity. In the, this is photograph before uh, circulation. This is photograph after circulation. So degradation of textile effluent using zinc oxide in sunlight is possible. Even we have degraded uh, the sea water as well. Of course, it was not possible for us to degrade inorganic impurity from the sea water, but the organic impurity which was present in the sea water, it was possible to degrade. We collected the samples of the sugarcane factory wastewater and with the help of zinc oxide and gallium and nitrogen doped zinc oxide, it was possible to completely get potable water out of this very dirty water. E. coli is one of the uh, bacteria which is responsible for the diarrhea or this. So with the uh, help of biochemistry counterparts, collaborators, we used, uh, we, uh, we circulated the water containing E. coli bacteria through our reactor. So it was found that after two hours, when we use this uh, in the, the, the reactor, whole E. coli, total E. coli uh, bacteria, they were uh, died. So it is possible to remove biological impurities as well with the help of so we have published one of the review articles where uh, we have reported that the pollutants which we have removed they are toluene salicylic acid pol gp oxalic acid mb ao7 rhodamine b textile effluent factory waste water and equally levels this is the list of the publications on the catalysis so metal oxides which are extensively studied for as a catalyst uh, for photocatalysis are tio 2 zinc oxide iron oxide tin oxide zirconium oxide mgo and this is the complete list of the oxides there are ternary oxides also like zinc stannate strontium titanate hmm, bismuth and state etc and the composite which i explained composites as well this is the list of the collaborators uh, Professor Michael Newman Spellard, Professor JHT, Professor Yusu, Dr. Wa, and Dr. Harnath. Dr. Harnath now has um, shifted to Warangal, NIT Warangal. I am very much thankful to all my collaborators. And the, this work was not possible without the 100% contribution by all my students. So these are my past students who are working at as a faculty at various institutes and these are the students who are currently working under my guidance. So thank you very much organizers for uh, giving me this opportunity to explain in front of uh, this August gathering the work which is being carried out at my laboratory so far as the photocatalysis is concerned. So thank you very much. Now I request all the participants, if they have any questions, they can ask me in, uh, in the direct mode. They can start their video and uh, they can ask me the question. Any question? Thank you, sir, for your nice presentation. Okay. The session is session is open for discussion. I request uh, delegates to ask questions directly to Rajpuri sir. Yes. Mm -hmm. Nobody. Hello? Let me see, sir. It's in chat box. One minute. Ah. Okay.
डॉक्टर हेलो सर 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 बोला 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 टेल मी वेदर इट बेटर टू गो फॉर और सुपर हार्नेसिंग विजिबल लाइट और सन लाइट for separating or uh, degrading the component and super capacitor it is used for storing the charge so it, it can be used in other purpose this is this is used in other so basically there is no comparison between these two devices because super capacitor is a other device and this is of course there also photoelectrochemical uh, cell is there here also the idea of photoelectrochemical cell is utilized But these are for two different approaches. Okay, sir. Thank you. Hmm. Any other question, please? So there is question in chat box. Uh huh. Uh, what is the difference between photocatalytic degradation, photocatalysis, hmm. and photo degradation? Ah, uh, all are same. Photocatalysis. is the catalysis with the help of photons hmm ah well, i think uh, the question should be what is the difference between photocatalysis and photoelectrocatalysis so the basic difference between these two is in the photoelectrocatalysis we use electrical bias for effective charge separation and in the photocatalysis we don't use any electrical bias and in the catalysis we don't use photons so the basic difference between catalysis and photocatalysis is that in the photocatalysis we make use of electromagnetic radiation for occurring chemical reaction mm -hmm. any other yes sir one yes, more sir. question is there ha uh ha -huh. uh, in between physical and chemical methods mm -hmm. which one is good approach for photocatalysis application uh economically speaking chemical methods and uh, property wise speaking physical methods okay because the simple material if you prepare with the help of uh, via um, physical methods with the help of physical methods get physical vapor deposition or sputtering uh, the quality is very nice there is nice control over the stoichiometry of the material but the cost of production cost is very very high on the contrary if we prepare the simple or the photocatalyst uh, with the help of chemical methods for example spray paralysis ah. cvd or uh, chemical bar deposition or any other chemical method you don't ball on less discover man and the material method is cost effective therefore i can i will advise that, that the you you go for chemical method another advantage of uh, you, you using chemical hello is that to prepare oxygen gel for free for the second therefore therefore uh, always go for chemical uh, sir which method is mostly preferred for waste water treatment uh for waste water treatment after other uh, treatment methods which i have told chemical uh, treatment method and biological treatment the advanced oxidation method which i have proposed it is uh, suggested of course there is a sonolysis of course there is a uh, h2o2 addition hydrogen peroxide addition chlorination also are there but advanced oxidation process is the a uh, best process patil sir m a patil sir prashna vichara de tumhala kay hello any other question most of my students they are present i can see 
they also yes, can yes. ask now ask the question. now the strike came up to 76 something like that uh, participant strike okay. okay. but it's a okay question which arises again 67 uh, hello sir i like to if the question and answer session is over then i'd like to speak for a few minutes okay can i proceed आज का प्रश्न प्रश्न का है का प्रश्न नस्तिल तर आपन क्लोज करो पहले सेशन अनेक मंग नंतर के लिए दर्शन बोलते यस सर देर इज वन क्वेश्चन हाँ हाँ सांगा क्वेश्चन इज फ्रॉम गणेश दिलवाले दिलवाले दिलो दिलो वाले ओके सॉरी माय स्टूडेंट यस 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 हाउ डोपेंड्स अफेक्ट्स टीआईओ टू फोटोकेटलिसिस इफिशिएंस ओके व्हेन य with the help of suitable dopant, then it is possible to tell her, take the uh, Fermi level or the position of a Fermi level. Also, it is possible to tell her the band gap of TiO2 with the help of doping. Certainly, it is possible to reduce the band gap energy of TiO2. And therefore, doping will certainly enhance the photocatalytic efficiency. Yogesh. Questions? Yogesh. Ah, sir. Huh? Huh. Next. Okay. Any more question, Patak, sir? Uh, no, there is no question in chat box now. Uh, Killedar, sir. Now okay. you can proceed. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Rajpuri, sir. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank oh. you. Thank you, sir. Now I am speaking just as a participant of this webinar. Firstly, I am very much thankful to Honorable Dr. Khilare, sir, principal of this college, the coordinator of the seminar, Dr. Bobade, and his whole team for organizing a webinar on a very important topic. All the resource persons have explained the basics of the research in their talks. Even though the Mr. Rajpure, sir, has also explained the basic concepts related with his topic. And I personally feel that this information through today's webinar is very useful to the researchers, those who are starting their research just now. Because when you are doing the research work, the basic concepts have vital importance. Otherwise, we simply go on doing the characterization without knowing the basics of those characterization techniques and the usefulness of those characterization techniques. Because characterization is the key when we are doing the research. Because the tailoring of the properties of the material is uh, too much related with the characterization. Because after all, char through characterization, we come to know what are the basic properties of the materials and where the material can be used or applied. So I am very much thankful to, once again, thankful to the principal of this college, the Dr. Bobade, the head department of physics, and the whole organizing team of the college for organizing a nice seminar, and which is obviously very useful and fruitful to all the participants. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mr. Umesh Jado wants to speak something. Patak, sir. Umesh. Unmute, kara. Unmute, kara. Unmute him. Umesh Jado. Unmute him. How much is it, Umesh? You have to unmute him. Umesh, unmute, kara, tum, sir. Mike. Umesh. Hello. Umesh, sir, put the mic, microphone over here. Ah, it's OK. Ah, tell us. Can you tell us, Umesh? Very nice, sir. Yes. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. OK, OK. Thank you. Anybody wants to speak up? Participants, please. Remarks on your experience <clears throat> yeah how oh, mr 
हाँ बोलो ना सर बोबड़े सर गो फॉर द नेक्स्ट सेशन ओके सर ओके हाँ नाउ लास्ट सेशन विल बी वोट ऑफ प्रेजेंटेशन ऑफ वोट ऑफ थैंक्स बाय प्रोफेसर दिनेश पाटन आई रिक्वेस्ट हिम टू प्रपोज वोट ऑफ थैंक्स हेलो आटक सर सॉरी दिनेश डोंगड़े सर ओके Good afternoon, one and all. It gives me an immense pleasure to extend my vote of thanks to all those who have helped us, guided us, and supported us to make this national online seminar on recent trends in materials research a grand success. First of all, I would like to thanks our honourable principal, Dr. C J Kilare sir, for encouraging us for organise such a grand event, which will definitely be helpful. to all young researchers of physics thank you sir thank you very much i would like to propose sincere vote of thanks on behalf of bolan college vita and behalf of all the participants today's chief guest of seminar honorable professor dr k y rajpuri sir of department of physics shivaji university kolapur in his keynote address sir has encouraged us to give 100% involvement while doing research so that we can create knowledge and technology which will be helpful to the society in his talk on metal oxide semiconductor for catalysis sir has informed us about the latest trend and development in field of metal oxide semiconductor thank you once again sir for accepting our invitation as chief guest and resource person i would like to extend my sincere vote of thanks on behalf of balwan college vita and all the participants to the distinguished resource person honorable professor dr s d dole sir for of department of physics savitribai phule pune university pune on in his on metal and semiconductor nanoparticles by radiation method he gave a brief idea about how to use radiation method to for nanoparticles using different metal and semiconductor materials he also thrown a light on application of such a nanoparticles in different areas which are very much useful to the society thank you sir thank you very much for your delighted lectures i want to express my vote of thanks to dr jiho jire sir of department of physics and astronomical science central university jammu on behalf of balwan college vita and all the participants it is a one flexible resistive switching memory device based on organic materials dr jiho sir has explained mechanism of flexible resistive switching memory in lucid language he also explained material use for operation of switching memory in his talk they gives various application which are useful in a electronics i am thankful to principal and head of the department of physics sgm college karad for their guidance and help i would also like to thanks our hod dr c r bobde sir for providing continuous encouragement and support i am Happy to express my precious vote of thanks to organizing committee, all teaching and non-teaching staff of Balwan College Vita. I would like to extend my sincere thanks to all the participants for their patient sharing and gracious presence for the nice online seminar. Thank you all for making this seminar grand success with your valuable contribution. Thank you. Thank you very much. टेलिग्राम वरती है ईमेल आई डी लाइन फीडबैक लिंक भर तुम्हारा सर्टिफिकेट उपलब्ध हो सर्टिफिकेट सा फीडबैक लिंक वरुण पाठने गरजे चाहिए thank you ha so, uh, all the participants are requested to fill up the feedback form so that you will get the certificate of the webinar immediately on the on your email thank you thank you
केल्यानंतर सर थांबूया सर मग हां ओके थँक्यू थँक्यू योगेश थँक्यू बोबडे सर ओके थँक्यू सर थँक्यू थँक्यू प्रियंका बोबडे सर एक काम करा युट्यूबला तुम्ही सेव्ह केले का चेक करा हो सर युट्यूबला सेव्ह झालेले सगळं सेशन सेव्ह झालंय काही प्रॉब्लेम नाही युट्यूब मध्येच बंद करा व्यवस्थित ओके हो ओके ठीक आहे ओके 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 पाठक सर चेक करा